every single button was pressed. I, I only pressed game, and apparently I also pressed intermission and enter at the exact same time. I don't know. My phone just grew two bro? inches and just, hi, guys. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Howdy. Divide and Conquer Sacred World. This is a 5th edition game based on the Pathfinder Interseas using the Greyhawk Pantheon, a little bit Taldori, Innistrat, Ravnica, all wrapped into one. Um, together. Uh, all wrapped together. Um, and uh, also starting to introduce homebrew stuff, which I think that should really be mentioned. But hi, guys. How are we doing today? It is an exciting day. Uh, I'm so it's happy. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. Beautiful day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Lamb of God just dropped the new album. I'm excited. Okay, cool. Got that out of my chest. Oh, oh yeah, I should bust that so I can hear you better. Oh, oh are you listening to them right play. now? It's still playing in Julia, my mind. I wouldn't, I would not judge you, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> okay, if you just listen to that on repeat. Uh, God. Um, it, it should be able to change it. Repeat. It didn't repeat the very first song as soon as it streams hard. It's good. Anyway, <laughs> so um, uh, let's let's do our our purge, uh introduce ourselves, and then we'll get right into it. I'm very excited with this this oh, no. dungeon. I'm I'm just oh, I am I I've I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking about it for like months, and we're finally here, and I'm excited. So um, yeah. first let's uh quick pluggies we have merch it's down below we have awesome well, we have merch we have awesome cool uh price shirts um yeah i should be wearing mine right now but i'm saving it oh, oh okay um <laughs> speaking of sea devils uh alistair transition that works right alistair tra that doesn't work at all. sure i guess that's how that works that's, that's, uh, that's those are two completely unrelated things that's uh weird. yeah i yeah <laughs> they, they very much are wait but are they though but are they? Uh, but are, are they? they? Hey, you make, um, you, there's a um, thing. It's called Alistair, bro. There is. Yeah, bro. Do you want to talk so, about that, bro? Uh, I guess I'll talk about it, bro. Hey, guys. So I am the writer for the Alistair webcomic. And uh, I'm pretty sure there's a Lynn scuttling around somewhere in the walls. Somewhere. <laughs> uh, Hashtag on all the walls. wires. Uh, so I'm writing it. Uh, Lynn's doing the art for it. And we have... Uh, our launch date in August of 2020 for the Alistair comic when we'll go live on Webtoon. We are super excited for it. It is a righteous adventure about a, a newly knighted paladin bro named Alistair who is trying to save the world with his barbarian bro, Wes. And in order to celebrate the comic's launch, we are doing an Alistair one-shot, which we have an official date for. Yeah, we do. Which is, it's going to be August 3rd when we'll be doing, uh, instead of doing, uh, I believe, Board of the Dragon Queen game, yes. we're going to be doing a uh, Alistair one-shot. So I'll be me, West. Uh, it'll be Lynn as Alistair. We'll have Jeremiah playing, I don't know who. <laughs> and we'll have, and uh, Tabitha being the resident group mom. And then uh, uh Jesus himself as the dungeon master. I'll be DMing and three games that week. Three whole games, bro. Yeah, I'm excited. Thanks for the break. <laughs> yeah, no problem. What? You're welcome. Who's playing three games? You're, oh, oh yeah, Jeremiah's playing Come three on, games. Jeremiah. <laughs> Jere Jeremiah has to remember another character name. <laughs> Jeremiah, you're gonna be stressed for different reasons. <laughs> so many different reasons. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, so yeah, and uh, we plan on having a lot of other stuff uh, coming up with the uh, with the one shot and the comic launch, and we hope to bring you more information on that soon. Yeah. But until then, you should join us on our Patreon, which we have the link down below on the Twitter. Just scroll down, and you should be able to uh, subscribe for as little as a dollar a month, and that gives you access to our uh, our Alistair Discord, where you get to hang out with all of the fun, uh, cool patrons. You can post your art, you can post your projects. Everybody is really cool and welcoming. And they're always, uh, they're really friendly. They love uh, lifting people up on their own projects and stuff. We have an accountability project where people post their stuff and then somebody else will come in and be like, hey, I'll help you with that. And so it's, we've got like a whole cool community going. So That's it'd be really awesome so if you joined us. Nice. Every yeah. single time the Alistair Discord is talked about and there's always something new happening, it's, it always warms my heart. You guys are so cool. Yeah. You guys are, are yeah, good pros. We we certainly try to make a good space for people to, you know, have fun, mostly. And yeah, and, and so they also give input on Demiplanes and Doodles, which 
There yeah. will be no Debbie Plants and Doodles tomorrow, but we will be picking up again uh, the following Saturday with a topic that was already chosen uh, by the bros. And we're going to be talking about uh, styling and dressing your own D&D character. Why do you, know that? you mean, uh, if you're a rogue, you wear all black, right? And spikes? No. Yeah, you wear black and spikes, and you wear the, a t-shirt that says, I am an edgelord. Oh, uh, and if you want to accent, no. you wear brown. Like, a little bit of brown. Or maybe Just a little, little bit, bit of brown. brown. Yeah. Yeah, no, of course. I disagree with all black. I disagree with <laughs> Jeremiah. That. I don't know what you're showing. I can't see that. Jeremiah, I just <laughs> see a blank, a blank square. Whenever you hold that up, what this? What yeah, that's exactly what I see. <laughs> I do see. I do see Dicky having having an item. Uh, okay. Dicky, yes. Yeah, my announcement is is that my the lady who I call my boss, in Greenfield, Ireland, just published her fourth book of Thaw. I don't know if you can see the title of it. It's too shiny or what. This is her fourth book of a young lady that jumps dimensions and finds out that she had a past in that dimension and it's an alien world. It is really cool. Uh, you know, when it talks about Earth. They're basically talking about the KD Cypher area. So uh, it's a really good read. It's easy to read. It's science fiction. It's fantasy. And of course, I edited it, which I got my immortal words inside that I got the acknowledgement for that. So nice. what? That's awesome. Just let well, you guys know. It's a good... Writing's the thing we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if you are into science fiction and stuff like that, I highly recommend it. This one is called The King of Thal. Cool. So, uh, If there's a link, uh, put, uh, you can I put it in the chat. I will take care of those Thank links you. for you. Uh, appreciate it. Every... Appreciate right. it. Um, so, uh, with all that, anything else? As always, we, we talk for like an hour and we're like, we should mention what we're going to say. It's almost yeah, like we're prepared. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, merch for for our bros at Taladin Claw. Yes, yes. Who uh, right now are streaming the uh, 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 something C? Frick, I forgot the name of it. Steaming C, not uh, Steaming C. Yeah, the C, uh, uh, Deadly C, C Devils, Seven C's. Yes, they are exactly. They are streaming uh, the C, the official C Devil game. We yes. forgot to announce that launch yeah. earlier. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which, we really uh, need to play when, that. So when you're done with with our game, only when you're done with it, then you can go watch their stuff. Uh, but real, real these talk. awesome <laughs> dice rolls and these the, here's a, a dual hex one with an engraving of our logo. Um, I just realized we could get another another cool logo engraved on one of these if we didn't have enough dual hex ones in it being related to devils and sea things. One of these days, our campaign will have nothing to do with the sea or devils. That's a lie. Um, so uh, <laughs> it's almost like I like things. Um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, their Etsy information is down below. Uh, they have uh, dice vaults, dice trays. They have DM screens. They have some amazing wooden dice. Uh, and if you use the code Divine Conqueror at checkout, you get ten percent off, which is amazing. Um, yeah, uh, their Kickstarter was successfully funded, which is super cool um their first kickstarter and it was like funded like over 200 percent if i uh, remember correctly which is incredible um Ow. yeah it's, it's amazing um but uh, but, but uh hum, sorry is that <laughs> for what well, you said i i thought you said something so he said, I, thousand, uh, thousand thousand percent. Super shady. Uh, yes it's like a thousand percent not 200 because two thousand percent Two thousand yeah. percent, bro. Two thousand. I think that's what. Yeah. One trillion. Um. So. Uh, <laughs> numbers. Are one. A bigger trillion. number than one. Um. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's introduce ourselves. Uh, kick in that intro that I preemptively kicked in by me pressing too many buttons at one time. Um, and then get right into the game. Hi guys, I am Jesus. I'll be y'all's dungeon master for tonight. Oh, uh, Jeremiah, who shall you be playing? Hello. I am playing Ragnar. Ah, uh, Ragnar, full metal. Like the artificer. And he, there's going to be a Brahm with me as well. Brahm is always with. Uh, and then right next to uh, Jeremiah, we have a uh, Colton. Hello. I was also looking for a really small hand to use, but I can't find anything <laughs> around. So, um, Hi, my name's Colton. <laughs> I play Ariel, the angel paladin of Paylor. <laughs> and next to Colton, we don't have them in the same uh split screen uh we have uh uh the goodest of boys goodest of boys hey what's up it's me ya boy vic and i will be playing uh west the human barbarian warlock yeah yeah 
Uh, and next to Vic, we have a Dickie. Hi, I'm Dickie. I play Orc Death the Mighty, a Dwarven Fighter, Strong Drinker, Strong, whatever you want to call him. He's just strong. <laughs> strong. He's quite strong. You know what I mean. Uh, and then, uh, then an odd lastly, uh, hey, Tabby, who are you playing? Hey guys, I'm Tabitha. I will be playing Cole, the Tiefling Cleric. Um, fun fact about Cole. Yes, please, please. This is what I live for. <laughs> um, he, when in his youth, he was kind of a bad boy. Uh, he forged his mom's si signature for a magic internship. Oh my god. He would. <laughs> he that wanted to go to the do museum. That. Such a rebel. He wanted to go to the museum, but his mom said no, so he forged her signature. What an edgelord. Oh my god. <laughs> Not just an edgelord, a nerdy edgelord. A nerdy oh. edgelord. <laughs> Oh man, that's that's actually really funny to me. Um, and um, uh, our our Lazuli, uh, our our bard uh, Kelsey will not be joining us. Uh, she's still recovering from uh, her surgery, so wishing her the best in that regard. Yeah, yes. um, and I will. Yes, all the words you just just said. Yes, at the same time. Um, I'll be manning her character for today, unless someone mm. really wants to, which uh, you don't have to, but uh. If you really do, then yeah, uh, I'm not gonna no, say no. Um, but uh, with that, let's roll that intro. Hi wow. guys, hey. welcome back. Um, as I'm totally uh, opening up a character sheet because I need to get last. Uh, um, I mean, it's two... like Cole uses piercings as our kind of focuses, so he's not that big of an edgy magic nerd. <laughs> not calling anyone out specifically. Recap what happened last time. Uh, the Elysian Vagabonds and our Bag of Beans were facing Bobby. against a. Um, a fire giant that was called the Dreadnought, this this guard for this uh, fortress to a fire giant king, uh, this great smith that has overtaken the Duragar city. Um, the uh, overall mission is to go to the lower dark, save your friends, and get out. Uh, in the uh, midsection of the upper dark, still two more layers to go, you guys um, encounter these Duragar and um, being goodwilled individuals uh we'll put a hyphen in that um uh, decided to aid them in return they will send their best warriors to aid you in your mission to defeat the the death tyrant this beholder that refused to die you guys uh essentially started a revolt um learned that the death curse is uh spreads fast um, with every giant dead or every Duragar that died or Etten, uh, within seconds they just came back. Learning that the fire giant that uh, perished and was thrown into the lava, like every other undead that usually took care of it, the fire, the, well, the lava, sorry, did not affect it. Mm -hmm. Whoops. Facing why. the Whoops, Dreadnought as she locked the tower and then died before unlocking it, you guys found another way in. As there's still a couple of undead giants above quote unquote surface for our purposes. Going into the tower, you guys arrested, uh, discovered a plethora of massive work armor and weapons. Uh, pocketed a few for your own. Uh, with uh, hopefully the uh, the end result is to either wear it or sell it, as mass work quality armor and weapons are very expensive. Um, you guys went up the second floor where the dining hall was, escaped a horde of uh, undead, 
climbed up a odd surface uh, since the, the topography and the area is completely shaping and, and morphing into uh, with a uh, knowledgeable uh, cleric over here letting us know that the with certain powerful individuals the area molds to their will um, a uh, staple with very strong entities um, and now in the third layer of this tower where the quote unquote pets lie the ones that this fire giant deemed worthy of uh, keeping alive to aid in his smithering that's where we left off after a banishment spell from a uh, on uh, an Etten guard you guys uh, s placed yourselves inside the uh, the official quote unquote dungeon so with that good job Cole uh, yeah good job Cole uh, we will waste no time and uh, I need to move you guys to the correct map. Excuse me one second, since it's really far because I have too many maps. You guys are going to be here for one second. And then let me place you now where you are here. Okay. Uh, letting roll 20 load up. Um, changing the mood just slightly to a more sinister. Uh, Happy music. Yeah. The happy, the the happiness that is this music. Ugh. All right, one second, guys. I need to do a refresh because of that one glitch where the text of the audio just stays on. So, um, as that is loading up for the audience, apologies for the black screen. Uh, the uh, the Etten was just uh, banished, um, and Colt, knowing how your spell works. The, uh, since this Etten is from this material plane, he is essentially in a pocket, a harmless pocket dimension for a minute. As you guys went through the door, closed it, um, uh, uh, Arwell, uh, opening it, failing at first, but opening the next ones. And a constant ding, ding, from the upstairs of, uh, our dwarves, especially, uh, Rognar, understanding that this is the um, sound of metal hitting anvil. As you guys see the uh, the pockets of lava some oddly uh, on this third floor of the uh, almost close to 80 or so feet above the surface where the, the lava river was flowing through. Um, you see a couple of um, uh, fire pits uh, just to amplify the mood. The temperature in here is uh, starting to get into the high 90s. It is incredibly hot. Uh, as you hear just the poles of, of lava just storming through, uh, not really melting too much of the stone that would be nearby, uh, but definitely aiding in that heat. And one further thing. Orc death. With oh, each yes. ding of uh, that is the each audible ding of that uh, anvil, your axe vibrates. Oh, uh oh, we're near something magical, my friends. So, wait, how do you know that? I get a little shaky, shaky out of my little axy axy. Yeah, I, do, I don't need to know what you do in your spare time, bud. But thank you for the information. <laughs> <laughs> what what the, what the have you been doing with your axi axi? I, I don't I don't. As you, you see, Laz with like that embarrassment, like Dad, with that style of a of a <laughs> embarrassment, and just looking away. Uh, look, look, Ariel made me stop telling you anytime I felt something in my hand. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you just see Cole looking over, and it's like, hi, not to like you know. Freak anybody out. Um, that guy's only gonna be gone for about a minute. So how long's a minute? How long has it been, Jesus? No, Wes is honestly asking how long is a minute. Sixty seconds. How long is sixty seconds? Oh my God. <laughs> We're dealing with an Einstein here. Let's just. It's move been what is happening with you? Almost ten Orca. seconds now. I don't know. What so, that means. Uh, Elysian Megabonds, what do we do? So let's keep moving. But let's Orca. head towards the anvil strikes. What? Uh, what's right. happening with your axe right now? 
it's vibrating every time the thing goes, you hear that ding. It's responding to it. What mm. does that mean? That it means, means something magical it. is there. Maybe it likes it. Uh, so, so it senses magic, magical items? Yes. Uh, so, you'll see um, with how dark it is in here with the lava illuminating the cave, you'll see Krognarv's eyes sparkle when when Ork Death confirmed there's a magical item here somewhere. <laughs> Shiny. So I guess we're going to keep moving, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, as we're moving, I'll just kind of walk along west and just be like, what, a minute is 60 seconds. It's um, I told a form him of that. measurement. I, and I just told him that. I, th I think if you... In west terms. Um, one... West One. Chattington, two West Chattington, three West Chattington, and so forth. And so you get to 60, and that should be about a minute. Okay. I'm not sure how that works, but okay. So I just say that 60 times, and then that's a minute. To yourself. Please. To myself. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly. This is Cole not trying to be freaking mean, but it's like. One West Chattington. One West Chattington. As uh, Harlow is <laughs> oh, no. currently moving ahead. Four West Chattington. What have I done? <laughs> Who comes after four? <laughs> uh, what's the, I mean, not West. Uh, Cole's going to get up to about where Brom is. Um, and also a uh, shield of faith. Okay. Uh, if you don't mind putting concentration marker on your... Uh, Mini. Hey, I guess I was giving Wes too much credit there to count to 60. Fun fact about Wes, he can only count as high as how many attacks he can do. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So, as you uh, guys are. Oh, never mind. Cruising... I take that back. I'm not doing that. I'm still holding up concentration on banishment. Uh oh. As you guys are perusing forward, uh, just a little note for how uh, you know the the limitations of roll twenty. All these white uh, boxes will be indications of doors. Okay. Cool. Cool. So, uh, cold Rognarf, you guys do see a door on this side. Uh, I'm gonna announce it, but not really. Shout, it is a, uh, yeah. The most whisper a dwarf can muster, um, there's a door. Close um, by. And I will move forward. Um, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, Like, I don't know how our, how the limitations of our movement at the moment. You get free movement right now until uh, okay. I deem otherwise, yeah. Okay, I'll kind of I'll quietly move up, like stealthily move up to the door. Roll myself? Yeah. I'll actually go over there to basically be a backup, but yeah. I'm stealthing as well, and so I'm going to roll. Right. Do you myself? That is... I'm not good at self, but yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I'm not either, but um, that's going to be a solid 16. Okay. Yeah, mine is a 14. Could have been better. <laughs> we could have. Uh, all righty. With that. Oh, okay, cool. Um, oh, uh, do I need to roll for Brom too? Because Brom's coming. Uh, uh, yeah, if Brom is moving stealthing, then yes. As the last is also going to go over here. Why is Brom always rolling better? Or death too. <laughs> oh boy. Brom is at 18. <laughs> okay. As Arbel gets right up to the door. Sorry, sorry, I was uh, uh, you want to uh, say that again, Tom? Cole's going to move stealthily too. That's the 19. Oh, that's probably why. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then let me not be able to do that so you guys know who Arbel is. Oh, okay. So, well, Colton, good good eyeballs. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, Ariel. <laughs> it, it's, it's the limitations I, of Roll20. I did not know I'm that would not, happen. I'm not going to matter. Yeah, I appreciate it. With... Uh, all right, I guess West's full movement gets him up behind Braum. With that, you see uh, as Arwell is P 
picking at the lock, and you hear it. He kind of looks at you, uh, Ariel, and then back towards the rest of the group. Um, and uh, you see that uh, he has his uh, crossbow uh, on the back, but uh, his hand on a dagger. And uh, th this uh, door looks like it, he's going to uh, move towards the left of the current position to like slide it open. And as he, yeah, well, let's do that. Let's just make all players. And then, uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna ready an action, I guess, sure. when he like, well. Actually, first of all, so he's picking the lock. He, yes. he pulled out a dagger. Um, I'll whisper to him, is, is it safe? He looks at you. To be honest, I didn't hear anything, but that... Um, this place is I weird. will pull out my... No, no. I'm just going to get ready to go into the room. Right when he opens the door, I'm going to bolt straight inside. Okay. Um, like, and uh, to uh, the only way to really show what's in the other room, you guys, uh, with a odd trick that I just realized, as soon as he oh. does open the door, and you see, the, um, you see two Duragar completely undead. What? And since he's the one that's doing that, uh, they're both gonna lunge right at him. Oh, oh shit! Because I rolled perception and they heard you. Oh uh, great! Oh boy! So, um. With a oh, good job on being a rogue. Um, yep. With that, they both lunge right at him. As you see, this he kind of tumbles around as the door is sliding, and they uh, completely miss. But they do step forward. Um, with that, oh. as you see, these these Dirk are just <laughs> move forward. They already took the action. What do you guys do? I am going to kind of grab. I want to. I want to grapple him. Okay. Roll and me uh, at uh, athletics, yeah. Because you said these are undead Jorgar. Right? These are undead Jorgar, yeah. So am I? Am I able to move? Here? Yeah. Um. Uh. Um. Since they technically went, I'm not really doing initiative right now until everybody takes a turn, and then we'll. Uh, then I'll go with initiative. Uh, All right, that is a 21. Uh, I got a 13, so okay. uh, it is grappled. Yeah, I'm going to attack it. All right, uh, want me to hit? With my movement, um, oh, go ahead. if I can, let me, let me just... With it being grappled uh, with our little roll, you can move it half your speed in any okay. direction you choose. Okay, um, with that then, so half my speed when I'm, I'm currently... And I, I I do understand that the the uh, the slight black grid on the map that I purchased is slightly yeah. off, so pay attention to the the white one. That is the the yeah. one that like your character is going to lock into. Um, yeah. So, my quick question. Uh, yes. Because when, when I say attack, do I do my two attacks or no? When you when you attack, you can do two attacks. Yes. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah. So I would still I'll... be flying five feet off the ground. Um, when I grab him, so I'll probably like grab him at like his shoulders. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm going to try to move him and throw him into this lava pit right here. Okay. Which would be, uh, I could make that that movement. Um, quick question as well. Um, you said when I do want to do a precise attack, like for example, hey, can I can I do a decapitation attack? Yes. For it. Like it's gonna be a disadvantage, right? Yeah. So call shots are disadvantage. Just because you do hit does not, in of itself, guarantee that the call shot you want to do happens. Uh, as an okay. example, the the character could have too much HP to justify the story uh, saying that that's what you're doing. Um, okay. But it, it yes, call shots to have a specific condition played upon them are with a disadvantage. Okay. Yeah, I rolled two two attacks with a disadvantage. One okay. is a twenty. Twenty, you said that hits. Yeah, dirty twenty, and the other one is a twenty-six. Uh, uh yeah, that hits. Okay. <laughs> uh, roll me damage. Yeah, plus ten. Yeah, roll me damage. Um, as soon as that's happening, uh, Ariel, as you grab him and your wings are flying back and you're trying to push him at this frame. Uh, you just need a little bit more momentum to be able to toss him into the lava, but it's not just quite there. So next round, uh, we can attempt to do that. Brogunov, you're rolling damage. Laz right. is biting at her teeth. 
Uh, you see Arbel about to grab his dagger and uh, do a stabby stab stab. Um, Cole, Wes, uh, Orkteth, what are we doing? What was the damage, uh, Rognar? 26. 26 total? Yes. Okay. Well, let me double check something. Uh, alrighty. Um, Cole is going... Yeah, to... that is a complete decapitation. Um, I just, as you slash hack into the neck and you see the neck kind of just go against the motion and you see uh, uh, the uh, the spinal column start like pop, uh, popping out as just the tissue is barely hanging on and you with the second uh, motion as your axe kind of magically swirls around you grab it on the other side it cuts off that part of the, the bone as uh, the head just <laughs> rolls off onto <laughs> the ground as for the sake of what we're doing. You see as it just poof, falls to the ground. Rogna Romy perception. perception. Cole's getting ready to cast Sacred Flame and then he sees that and um, 19. Plus 19. Golf clap. Okay. Uh, did you uh, Rogna, I'm sending you a message. Yeah, secret messages. <laughs> On Facebook or Discord? Discord. Secret message. Secret, Secret message. message. Cole's gonna kind of like just look really con concerned a little bit, but it's like, oh, they got it. Gonna okay. kind of hold action um, to um, to cast Sacred Flame. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is the trigger? If something moves towards him. Or attacks okay. anybody. <laughs> yeah, um, sure. with, with that too, I'm going to say something like, okay, this is more like a science experiment that I was doing, or or should I say, an artificial experiment that I'm trying to do. <laughs> the reason why I wanted to decapitate it if, is to see if the head is the one controlling the body. It's not. Uh, the body is moving. Yeah, uh, with that, as now that uh, Rognarf has mentioned it, you still see the body just technically so not, but it looks like the back just kind of <clears throat> gets up in almost a fashion to try to lift themselves back up. Uh, West or Uh, yeah, see, I don't, uh, look, I don't understand a lot about anything, but I know that's not how that's supposed to work. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna just eldritch blast the uh, the the moving body. Roll me to hit. It's not cool. dead, dead. <laughs> it's not dead, dead. So it's between th dead and dead, dead. It's not dead, dead. But I'm about to make it dead, dead. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, as I get his statue. Hey, that's actually good. Uh, come on, this lovely app called D and D Beyond. <laughs> Give me my spell bonus, please, and thank you. That would be... 21? 21, as you shoot your Eldritch Blast, it rips a giant hole in the center, as you see that it kind of splits in half. Um, roll me damage. Oh, almost maxed. That's nice. That is... 9 points of nine? damage. Okay. As uh, you see that um, it's, it's, it's started to cave uh and the body is still technically functioning but it's very disabled at the moment it, it has very little actual physicality to do much harm but it is technically active so how's that for your experiment as i as i look to ragnar with that orc death, is there anything that you want to do <laughs> i'm gonna go up there Oh yeah, name. Rob gave you a thumbs up too. As I gave Aww. you one, two, three, four, <laughs> twenty-five, right there. Okay. And I am going okay, to whack this guy with my axe. Okay. Is he <laughs> poor undead? <laughs> poor undead, Man. undead. Twelve and fifteen. Uh, both hit. Roll me damage. Getting quadruple teamed here. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that's, that's what it looks like. Kill. Uh, 
17 plus 8, 25. As you see, Orthic kind of run over at this uh, undead, headless, uh, spying broken, starting to split in two as he hacks and slashes at it. Um, as soon as the blade goes right through uh, twice, you see the undead just, just falls, completely motionless. Hmm. Completely motionless, is it? With that, Neat. technically, it's the undead start, and he's going to try to break free from your grapple, uh, Ariel. So I need you to roll me a contesting athletics. Oh, Got it. I actually rolled really high. Uh, 19. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, that is going to be a 19 as well. <laughs> okay, so oh. since you guys match, it as soon as it, it kind of grabbed and looked like it was about to bite you, and you move your hand immediately for that fraction of a second, it looks like it's free. Then you just grab it uh, in a position where its neck, uh, its teeth would not be able to get you, and you kind of pulled up off the ground a couple of inches, and it's still grappled. That was its turn. Oh, okay. Uh, technically, everybody else's. Um, you see Arwell kind of poke his head inside. Uh, Ariel, technically, I'll give you the lead on this, and you're the one that has the action base on them. What do you want to do? Chunk them into the lava. Roll me a strength check. Yeet. All right, beat uh, an eight, please. Yeah, that I rolled a nine. Okay. My modifiers. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> I was worried yeet. there for a second. As the undead kind of falls in, uh, this four-feet dwarf goes in, maybe... A couple of inches of the lava that it goes through, but as you see, it just starts slowly melting down to the point that its body is trying to claw out, not really Ugh. feeling the pain, but completely uh, melting within uh, a few seconds, being completely immobile just with the heat and the, the lava just destroying its body. Jeez. It catches on fire, you know, all that. Fire zombies. Love this. Uh, <laughs> With uh, that, I guess after Arwell, that, I'll just kind of catch it back up with everyone else over here. With that, Arwell kind of steps in with his dagger ready, sees nothing, puts it back, gets his crossbolt out. You see, kind of just runs um, over here. Cole wants to approach the one undead uh, headless Durgar, and he wants to investigate. Yeah, roll me investigation. The body, just to see if there's anything with it that just, I don't know, just seems like what could. Uh, that's 19? 19. Um, 18. Yes. The, the, the Durgar, um, from what you can tell, uh, has no real possessions on them. Stripped clean. You still see that uh, he has um, a, um, a ring holder for a throwing axe with nothing in there, so it looks like he was stripped out of his weapons. Um, the body looks extremely beat up so there's not much you can tell from discerning the death other than what just occurred uh, mm -hmm. you don't get too much other than it was stripped of his weapons its gear doesn't look terribly well uh, mm -hmm. it's not common It's he does have leathers uh, mm -hmm. it's about as much as you can get okay As uh, you see um, forward with the half door open, uh, it slid. You uh, you see the other room, another chamber uh, with this this slight uh, bowl. Um, uh, it does look more ornate than any usual one, uh, and a uh, statue of uh, a Durgar on the other side that looks completely untouched. Okay. Um, I wanna, I wanna go to the corner and peek. So sure. The, like I wanna go through here and peek. Oh, I guess there's nothing there. <laughs> I wanted to see. As you go over, you to see a larger puddle of lava, and then the uh, that it's almost corroding that road and uh, and uh, melting away the stone just ever so slightly. And okay. the bubble just. Hmm. Okay, then I guess I'll just move inside. With them. Okay. Um, I want to investigate that. 
thing. It's a Stoon Stoon original. Uh, roll <laughs> investigation. Is it? Is it? <laughs> uh, it does not. You can get all the way down here. Uh, I want you to roll before I say anything. <laughs> investigation. Dirty 20. Um, <laughs> it Don't it looks say. completely unaltered. It's not Sinistine. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's really well done. Uh, the stone here definitely looks like the stone outside. Um, it it slightly matches what's in here, but it looks like it's it's different. The 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 mineral composition is has been altered. So you do you get that this probably was part of the original version of the tower before it got molded right. and manipulated into what it is now. Oh, it is. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, no, history check. It's not intelligence. Can I see what kind of make of stone it is? History check. <laughs> you can <laughs> roll me history. Roll me history. Uh, related to New York, consider proficient to the history scale and added double provisions to the check. So that is a what's what is that? Um sorry, I have to do a lot of math. Here. Is there anything anyone else that uh, wants to be doing at the moment? Twenty-six? Twenty-six? Um yes. You see that it's uh um a natural dark stone that is found in the underdark um, with uh, sections of limestone added for easy decoration and moldability. Uh, a kind of a cheap cut and a cheap way to make uh, uh, statues. You see that the uh, it's been also painted to mimic the stone. So whoever built this uh, wasn't probably the most experienced uh, craft or uh, stone maker. I mean, it looks great and can fool a lot of eyes. But they took a shortcut. Okay. Mm. And then on the opposite side, is that just that? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, if you want to do a little bit more investigation uh, or perception, then I need to roll. Uh, at the moment, it's it is just a bowl with fire constantly burning on it. Uh, sure, let's do perception. Okay. Wes is just gonna stand guard and keep an eye out in case anything shows up oh, or he okay. hears anything. Cool. Roll me perception, Wes. Cool. He's still good at that. 26 on perception. 26. Um, oh, shit. 19 plus from, 7. From your almost 10 feet away, uh, just eyeballing it, uh, you do notice something that uh, you might need to go to the other one to confirm, but they do, these bowls, um, Everything thus far here, even the door, is made out of stone. A lot of the architecture here is stone. The houses are made out of stone. Very little metals, technically. The steel here uh, looks altered compared to, the, to uh, what's been happening. The fire giant's armor is almost the same identical dark steel as what fortified the fortress um, that the Durgar, the uh, Dreadnought, sorry, controlled. This, for some reason, you do get a sensation that this metal, this 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 golden um, uh, bowl, is not originally part of what they had here, uh, just based on the material that they used. You notice that uh, there is about a inch engraving around the uh, tip of the bowl that uh, looks like a constant flame moving, uh, and it looks familiar you can't pinpoint it and you need to confirm but uh it, you thought that maybe this bowl looked almost identical to this one looked what almost identical yeah i guess he's gonna go back and forth between the statues and confirm that uh yeah they're the exact same uh, uh bowl okay 
I'm yeah. gonna while this is going on, I'm gonna throw what's left of that zombie into that brazier. Okay. Bleh. Oh the goodbye. The completely gone one. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. The one that's all chopped up. So, <laughs> As so was, I, uh, yeah. what did you get? I, I, I rolled a dirty twenty. Oh, okay. For my perception. Dang. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> Wes, you do hear a thing. Uh-oh. You do you, have four eyes. You, uh, you hear uh, maybe 50, oh. 60 feet oh, by crap. the door. No, 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 no. It's a chicken bird. This poor boy. I guess I can take off the fact that I've been concentrating on that. Cool. Stuff. Wes is going to kind of go to the doorway of the room everyone's in, and he's going to lean in, and for once in his life, he is whispering, Hey, um... I think that giant popped back in. We should be quiet. Uh, Wes, with your perception, you're also noting that Laz is like half an inch away from you. Like, just like <laughs> with her hands kind of covering in a like, uh, I don't want to be here position, just tattling along hey, next to you. Put an arm around her and hold her there. <laughs> uh, she kind of just <laughs> and does nothing, <laughs> but just like lets it happen and just hauls you around. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Cole's just gonna whisper, how we all get in this room and then close the door and the giant doesn't see it, if he happens to open that door, doesn't see us in the hallway. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. I mean, I know how to work a door, so it might know how to work a door. It's last we'll follow in. Yep. Come here. Yeah. Now, has the room been thoroughly investigated? Uh, the cauldron here and this statue have been examined as you see last kind of just struggling to move the door and kind of looks at you west but says absolutely nothing and then waits two three seconds points at the door oh my god are you okay did you just die oh the talent fell oh no it's how this talent fell down <laughs> with with uh, Tabitha regaining consciousness of the real world, um, as uh, Les is uh, very obviously pointing towards you, West, that uh, she cannot op- close the door. Wait, I, I, will, I will close the door. And uh, with easy enough, just you see a lock, locks it in. I imagine Cole's the webcam off. finally comes back on and she's in a carriage. Right. Oh, right, you're uh, finally awake. Uh, it, it, might, it, might, it might be in there. <laughs> Understood. Nice, you're finally awake, traveler. Huh? <laughs> As uh, you see, Arwell, from what happened before, puts his ear and has been having it on the door for a good bit. Looks at yeah, you, Rogue. Not, I believe it's fine. I'm, uh, just, just in case, I have my back. And uh, he goes over, puzzled, kind of grabs a knob and just holds onto the uh, this the the ringed uh, uh, knob and just. Opens it up, and the door just opens normally. So it's unlocked, basically. It's unlocked, yeah. Um, and he'll step in. You guys second glaze a little bit. Uh, I'll walk with him okay. inside. Um, I don't know if he's stealth, but if he did, then I will stealth in there too. He's not really making uh, a lot of noise. I will follow him. Okay. Him, I suppose. It seems safe, at least. Uh, from what you guys can see, um, as you guys go in, this table is littered with tools. Um, hooks and light hammers, very thin, very precise. Uh, a lot of them kind of dirty. You see uh, driplets of uh, what once was uh, adventuring enough. You've... Uh, you can uh, just say that a lot of this was dried up blood throughout the floors, uh, dragging from the table to this door over here. You see another one of those cauldrons uh, and a chest that Arwo is currently investigating and with a very easy look on his face, the disappointment of it being empty. Oh. You see a doorway in front of you and a doorway to y'all's character's right. Okay. Um, I'm going to actually 
I'm gonna pull out um, a torch and I'm gonna light it up and I'm going to kind of call back to Laz. Um, Laz, see uh, if you can yeah. extinguish the fire in this brazier with uh, some water or something. Um, she kind of points uh, to uh, the uh, this one. Yes. Let me look at her cantrips. Uh, I believe she has shaped water. While while you were doing that, and while uh, Tab uh, moving to get settled, I was giving the instruction that Cole would like to investigate everything. <laughs> okay, roll me investigation for Cole. I will put him in the room. Okay. All right, roll your investigation. Oh. No. You're so, finally roll, awake. Roll right. Finally awake. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. All right. She does have shape water. As a. Uh, it's an 18. 18 okay. Uh, with an investigation, um, as you see, as Laz kind of gets her water and pff, goes over to the uh, the the uh, the, it's about five cubic feet of water that gets manipulated from a whole uh, uh, canister and goes over to the water. As you see it move through, almost looks as the fire just kind of dances around the water, and it's very odd to see them both moving throughout. And she's definitely moving the water to try to extinguish the fire, but nothing gets extinguished. I thought so. Okay. And so, like, uh, I, she looks like, very puzzled and worried towards you, Ariel. As Cole, with your investigation, as you're kind of looking at all these tools, these are all crudely imitated surgical tools for the purpose of torture and especially uh, the process of inflicting as max pain without killing an individual. You find a uh, spearhead that uh, goes very uh, uh, ingeniously uh, uh, sharp and as small as it can at the tip to puncture easily and then spread the wound opening. And when you click a button at the end, you see that it hooks over and uh, gashes inside to completely slash open the body and keep the spear hooked into the body. And then uh, the the tip of that kind of ex moves over, so the rod inside can actually be twist, so you can just move that spearhead and uh, and uh, extend that almost scythe looking hook uh, inside the uh, the person's body. But it's only about an I inch or two. I was a rogue assassin. This would be really cool, but this yeah, is I don't. Really traumatizing I don't. Right I don't want to be. I don't want to be in this Jason room. So. Um, yeah, and like, you see uh, many tools that are crafted and with your investigation you notice that all of them are maybe about an inch or two deep uh you call me you may roll me medicine after that oh medicine um, okay i don't think i'm proficient in that but i want to check if this nope, story is locked or unlocked uh uh sure sweet baby jesus <laughs> roll me sweet investigation baby. yeah i want to do it like kind of <laughs> I guess stealthily as I can. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, just do this with the doorknob or whatever. Roll myself. What did you get called? So he's not. Or he's not proficient in medicine, health? but he has a plus three to wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a twenty-one. An these plus all these uh, uh, tools will never puncture an organ. Oh, that's Cole just explaining that. Nice. Like you see him going off a little bit on speak. Like you know, yeah, I read about these once. <laughs> And then he realizes how fucked up that sounds, and it's like, cool. I'm sorry. In addition to that, <laughs> I'm you gonna do heal. find a couple of empty bottles uh, 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 that look very identical to a very common potion of healing, but they're all empty. Uh, I think we should take those. If you do, there are 12 empty bottles that could uh, hold up as much liquid as a potion of healing. Cool. Um, should I add that to my bag? Of if whoever else? wants to hold it. Uh, Ronar, sure. what did you get on your stealth first? Okay, stealth is a 17 and investigation oh, is here. a wonderful 9. <laughs> 9. Uh, stealth is 17, uh, investigation is 9. Okay. With that, uh, you thought the door was locked, and kind of just pull it, it just opens. You meant to do that. Yes. Um, this door is unlocked. Before <laughs> we leave, 
this room and proceed further. I'm slightly concerned about the fire in these braziers here. Um, it seems to be the way the dreadnought manipulated lava and fire to secure the castle. Do you think that possibly their tyrant here is watching us through this fire? Uh, as, as I look at my shield, it was like, it's, it's fire. Ability. I sometimes I look with my shield. Orc Death walks into the room, goes up to the fire, and sticks his axe in the fire. See what Ooh. it does. Okay. Um. Interesting. Mm. That is oh. a very good. Okay. As it does, you see that the fire kind of starts moving around the axe and almost breaks away. And you actually see the flames imitate the outline of the axe and kind of just stay in that outline. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone here who could possibly dispel or eliminate this magic? I can dispel magic, but... As um, I uh, if I understand correctly, this door is closed, but this one is still open, and Wes kind of is looking through. Um, mm -hmm. This flame Steven. is still on as well. It um, looks identical to the one that's over here. And uh, yeah, uh, there's something about the engraving on the uh, outline that uh, is still kind of the tip of your tongue, Cole. Uh, and I didn't notice this engraving, did I? No, you have not. Yeah. The engraving that was outside? Uh, that, that is around the bowl itself. Okay, um, it's... Cole wants to go back over in here, kind of go up, and he's going to just kind of, like, look at the engraving and whatnot. And so, just, just uh, um, uh, okay. the engraving that's here, um... it's also here, and it's also on the one outside. It almost looks like um... it's the exact same bowl. Hold on a second, Jesus, because... Hold on. Holy crap. Uh, oh. so... Okay. Uh, so that's the total underneath thing. Uh, secret messages? Yes, secret messages, for sure. Um, secret messages, secret messages. But it's a, but because of the number, I kind of just want to say it out. But no, I'll, I'll type it up. What are the rest of you guys doing? Uh, I'm waiting to see what Cole does or thinks about these. Because I am, at this point, kind of concerned that the fire is magical. And He's possible. just kind of going. I want to peek in the door that I just unlocked. That I totally unlocked. It was locked, and I totally unlocked it. <laughs> do you want a brownie point? And I'll give you a little bit more context if you, uh, if, if it depends on if you do say something or not. I don't want a brownie point. I want You're going to see Cole just standing in front of the, the bowl looking room. Hmm. Um, Did Ariel go in the room? I will approach Cole if Cole is looking kind of like stressed out about this. Have yeah, you he's just discovered anything. This is it a specific language that it's written in? G no, it's just the uh, the markings. Um, and if it was any specific lenses, language, you might think uh, with that high number that it would be in um, FGN, I believe, which would be which would be a subroot of primordial, specifically for the language, the fire elementals. Okay. He understands it. Yeah, Cole's looking it over and just pointing it to Ariel. I'm just going all kind of like historian a little bit, and it's like this, this, this is a god that doesn't exist. This is 
like elder element. Back up, you said a god. Is that what we're supposed to be fighting here? I'm not sure. Ariel, you may roll me a perception check as well. Do what? Ariel can roll a perception check if he's looking at the altar. Um, yeah. I uh, no, natural 20. Wait, natural 20? Okay, oh, so. <laughs> Ariel, I'll give you another piece of the information. Boy. As you look at it, this is definitely an emblem for a... What could be described as the first fire deity. An ancient uh, god that pays no homage to prayer, pays no homage to worship. It is and was defeated, conquered, or vanquished long, long ago before the material realm was truly of the material realm. <laughs> and as the more you think about it and more you look more little details from the study and the uh, libraries uh, in the f information that you shouldn't have but you do um, Cole mm -hmm. you do know one thing yes, yes. this is a dead deity technically the prime elementals, the original forces of elementals, when the deity dies, another one can easily take up its place. It just needs to be that powerful. Okay, you could funny. interpret it as if the first fire grew and grew and grew, eventually this fire could become a deity. As soon as that mm -hmm. deity dies, the second largest fire takes up the mantle of the fire deity. But there hasn't been one. You know, this would be a really amazing opportunity for my other character somewhere in this world who worships the fire god. But yeah, Ariel well, has no interest in fighting kind of like, that, like, again, in the sense of, like, a book nerd just yeah. um much concern but Cole also sitting there just like I don't know also very much of the element the elementals mm, neither do I with both of y'all's nat 20 on religion this is oh. homebrew stuff I explain this a yeah. little bit okay. um with, with y'all's conversation pieces mm -hmm. and puzzles start fixing in here and there from either personal uh, living through this personally or uh, study. Um, mm -hmm. Essentially, the in, in the realm of uh, godhood and deities, they can, as you all technically saw, they can die. Uh, the prime elementals, also called the elders, the uh, essentially the first of its plane, the ones that created each individual plane of existence, the ones that cause individual, um, uh, we can extrapolate it as it does fire damage, it does ice damage, like these elementals that are essential property of what is, is. Uh, they're, they're not necessarily deities in the same sense that Paylor is a deity, but they are on the same level in power. You may worship a fire deity. Does not mean that the fire deity acknowledges your existence or is aware of your existence. It is. It just is. Yeah, I don't like this anymore. Um, can we go home? <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask Cole again. Do you think you could dispel this magic? Cole just kind of shrugging like I can try. It's worth knowing what we're up against. If this will, uh, if this can be dispelled, I, 
I feel much more comfortable about what's to come. Do you want me to go on ahead and dispel the fire that's first, or? Um, I think I. <coughs> Excuse me. Because I don't know. I'm really not entirely do anything. Cole, what do you want to do? Yeah, I'm gonna send you a message real quick. Okay, please do. Just, uh, just asking. For if you could dispel it, I, I just don't. I'm not sure how I feel about the potential of. <coughs> something so ancient so powerful and if it is directly linked to this if this dead god isn't actually dead then perhaps its fire would resist such a spell but if it is dead this is either an imitation or perhaps just a remnant and it could be dispelled, I think that would give us some comfort in moving forward and facing the unknown. I'm going to pull reach a hand out and he is going to pray. Okay. Oh. Roll me a religion second. check. Religion check, please. Oh, boy. Can okay. I assist in his prayer? Oh. Sit down and pray next it's to not an at 20, oh. but Oh man, you were it's close. A 28. Uh, uh well, here I go. 28. 28. I don't need to help. Okay. Uh Wes also roll me. Put your head. And roll me percentiles. Oh, shit, Wes. I rolled an at oh. 20. This might be important. <laughs> I'm so happy with this. Need to need to get the book out. No, the old school book. Twenty-four. Is happy with this religion check. <laughs> Romy percentiles. Cole. West. <laughs> West. 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 Westington. Westward. Oh, uh, West is important here. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. I took it out of here and moved it over here. Uh, roll me. Wesley? Nick, we Westington, I think I said. Roll me 2d20. What the fuck did you get? She rolled a 90. Oh damn, that's good. Okay, okay, okay. But uh, Wes, roll, roll, Wes, roll me, roll me 2d20s. Yeah, y'all don't need any help. Wes is doing his own thing. over his freaking, his prey rolls that he got. I can't get over this. They don't need any help if they no. open up a can of worms uh, on their own. Okay, so I rolled a two and a six. Okay. Yep. Give me give, give, give me give me one second. Give me give me a give me a give me a one one two one second one two. Uh Okay. Wes yeah. instantly becomes a worshipper and follower of Paylor. <laughs> As you guys do see Wes sit down, cross his legs. And before uh, Cole starts to sit and pray, Wes is, he looks like he's in a deep meditation. Uh, do, 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 do. Why aren't they here? Okay, cool. Let's, let's, let's check the other thing. Uh, oh man, you guys, you guys rolled good at the same time. Give me notes. <laughs> You know well, what? Sure, let's, well, just, let's, let's do a live. Yes. You're looking for notes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're done with the notes? Okay. Yeah, I mean, what are, what are you doing? Um, it gives me a second yeah. more. That, that's good. Yeah, I mean, follow the yeah, Press that follow button or, you know, subscribe. But okay. hey, look, merch. <laughs> merch is good. <laughs> merch. <laughs> merch is always good. Why are these notes not here? That's fine. Okay, no problem. Uh,. Jesus, he looks smile. excited and I'm scared. The yeah. smiling Kim returns. When the DM what, is excited, Cole, Cole, we need to worry. What is your prayer? <laughs> what are you praying to Falagon? Sorry, Mike. 
pretty much in the sense of Does this god have a big piece in the overall puzzle that I'm trying to figure out? Does he play a hand at, like, you know, does he play a big hand in this? Um, shit. Um. Oh. Uh, clickety click 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 and... click. Secret messages this to this tonight. So, um, as you do meditate and and sit there, and okay. you concentrate on the road, you concentrate on the journey, you concentrate on how. Uh, Father God leads you. Mm -hmm. Essentially, you uh, you do see yourself at the end of a road with the flame being extinguished. The flame being extinguished? Being extinguished. You uh, don't... Really, you're unsure of what this leads but after the flame being extinguished the road pitter patters and, and extends in hundreds of directions where do you go oh i get to choose what road i walk yeah choose whichever road you want to walk through And like how there are a lot of them? There is at least one hundred that you can see. Holy shit. I'll roll percentiles. Sure, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Twenty four. Okay. And as you walk through the twenty third row and you keep walking and walking as these roads pattern and shift into different directions and multiply and go into different possibilities of what Farlagon could lead you to. You see yourself walking through this very door itself. Sit down and put yourself back into the meditative position that you're in. Mm Uh, sorry. So, Tabby, as I'm sure you're reading, mm -hmm. West, mm -hmm. we're getting a twofer. Oh, boy. <laughs> what specifically are you meditating about, or are you just meditating in general? Uh, it was just meditating in general. Just, I... Yeah, okay. just, just a general meditation. As you slip through, and you feel calm. You feel the cold breeze of clouds pass by as uh, you're eager and you're, you're, you're ready. Hammer in hand, armor of gold and silvers laid across your body. As uh, you see your your brethren next to you, as you all lunge forward through this dark circle, you're excited. You're ready. This is your purpose, and then. You see many different images trying to to like make form and, and have sense of it, but it keeps bashing in with just uh, visions of flame and and uh, sounds of carnal screams and torture as you see blood splatter um, and you know you're feeling grief and you're feeling pain, but most importantly, you're feeling anger. In that pain, in that grief, that hopelessness, that sadness builds up harder to more. 
and more and more anger. And then you see a very young, handsome man with with uh, um, uh, hair uh, up to shoulder length, curled up, golden, beautiful hair, uh, immaculate uh, face and, and bone structure and skin with, with uh, uh, little adorned uh, uh, cloth on him. Uh, just, you know what? This, this is not the right mood for, for what we have here. We need a little bit of different sound. This is just not what we need oh, no. um uh let's go with this guy sure let's go with this guy um as, as a with that um you uh you do uh, all right I'll, I'll we'll ignore that it says the the name of one of the songs here um with that, you you are, are walking in this this person. You know he's your brother. He's the one you trust the most. And as his wings extend, brother, you must stop. You cannot do this now. He's like, get out of my life. And you just punch him out. And you walk up this long and straight path of these uh, stairs. And as you approach, you see a man sitting down on a golden throne. Why did you send him to die? And uh, you see as your uh, as your hammer poof, emerges, and then you look at your skin, and it's turning red. And then you hear this large roar, this this golden ish. His voice booms, "Serve your purpose." And as you see your younger brother kind of fly in, father, he means none of this. Just stop. And he looks, and you hear a name. I need you to roll me perception. As a name is uttered. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Ah, crap. That's a 12. Colton, you good? As you hear a name, just... Just... And you see this man just... <laughs> roars at you as the wind places you back, and you use your maul to stand in the way and block the wind. You know what you must do. Lead... The army. And as uh, your smaller brother kind of grabs his head, forces you down as you feel uh, his hands on something new, horns growing. As he forces you down, as you wish, father. Let's go. As you guys are stepping down. And uh, you hear the argument. You know he forces to do this. You know he's killing our people. It's endless war for what? Us. Us ten. Now nine. This is madness. This war has not ended. And you see as your brother looks, his smile cranks. I know of a portal. If it's blood you seek. And if it's... <sighs> Fighting for us that fell. It's in the second level. As he kind of looks up, your smaller brother looks above towards this altar of just pure uh, gold. He's not listening. They're not listening. We're just slaughtered for their thrones. Let's make this next one count. I hear they're called Baylors. They should put up a good fight. And as you walk, you see uh, this crooked smile as this um, red portal just opens when he waves his arm and you step through. This one will be glorious. Let's make these demons bleed. And you both fall into a cascade of just thunder and lightning and flames and volcano exploding as you're descending deeper and deeper into the... Roll me intelligence. Oh my god. <laughs> no, <laughs> that is a... God damn it, Wes. <laughs> 
Six. Six. <laughs> You're descending into a battlefield as you land, and you see uh, a a other female uh, entity. This woman who you've seen before, with white hair and completely darkened eyes, as uh, she's like, <sighs> she fell. What must I do? Give me an order. And the young brother, take the first watch then. As she just flies away. And then, as you, uh, as you yell out a word, roll me another perception. <laughs> uh, it's a 15. As you hear, uh, as you scream mm-hmm. out, And then the next scenes are piles and piles of angels fallen, demons and devils all laid throughout the ground. <laughs> and with that, we're going to go on break. Oh, God. Jesus. <laughs> so we'll be right back, everybody. See how stressed I am? Look what these did to my hair. Who did you mind? Did you use my hair the whole time? <laughs> we'll be back in a bit, guys.
Hey guys, welcome back. Um, as we, uh, well, that was probably fractions of a second. As uh, <laughs> West is sweating and convulsing at the moment, uh, Cole is in prayer position. What do you guys do? Or uh, Rognov is opening a door right now, or uh, knows that it's uh, opened. Yeah, they're in the other room, so I, yeah. I didn't. I guess. But my my little plan was because since I unlocked this door, totally unlocked it. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna. What I want to peek inside or look inside. Roll me perception. Right, let's see. Um, since I'm only peeking, what about my shield? Like, is that a thing? That's yeah. Your shield gives you an advance on perception checks. Yeah. Okay. Like Where am I in relation? Fire. Okay, Aria was across the room. Like, <laughs> anyway, uh. Perception is a 23. 23. Well, you see a large two-headed giant with one head asleep and one awake. Hmm. At the end of a tunnel that you're looking through. Oh, uh, DM, I also sent you something. I'm not sure if okay. I saw it. <laughs> I want to close it, but slowly. Like, I don't know, sleight of hand or stealth, but yeah, that's what I want to do. Like, soft blue. Yeah, as a uh, wait, one more. One more time. I don't know if you wanted me. I want to close it softly or slowly. Like, I don't know if it's stealth or style hand. Yeah, uh, stealth, even though they're both the same anyway. <laughs> hey, that's a 19 plus 21. Doors close, and uh, nobody heard the thing. Uh, <laughs> or death, uh. Ariel, what are we doing? Um, I'm waiting on Cole's prayer to finish, and when it is, I will ask him, did you glean anything useful from that? Um, Cole's gonna, like, look up, up to Ariel since he's kind of kneeling, just, like... I have this feeling that... Whatever the this fire giant, it's here with it for a reason. And whatever it's trying to do, obviously not good. I have this inkling that it may be trying to achieve comfort. Or death is thoroughly investigating the room. Okay, roll mm -hmm. investigation. And the quicker we get rid of it. Huh, nat 20. Hmm. Uh, hey. With the torture tools, the altar um, uh, that they're talking about, you also notice that the door that is uh, ahead of you guys is locked, and you hear large moans coming from the other side. Hmm. Not large, sorry, deeper, deeper moans. So, what do we do, guys? There are deeper oh, wow. moans on the other side of that door. Either we're going to interrupt somebody doing something or somebody's in pain. I know Cole's going to look back over and see West and like, hey. West is a um, meditative stance and just like looking like he's seen some shit. Are you good? I uh and I'm I'm looking directly at Arya. I saw some things. Uh, what kind of things? You just see Cole like hold up a finger? Open up his journal and like go through like so many fucking pages, and then goes to a blank one. Continue. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I feel comfortable with you writing all this down, but okay. If you don't want me to, I don't have to. Uh, I whatever. I guess. No, I need to start a, a fucking dream journal or some shit. Cold, just like meditation journal. journal. Like I can start it for you. Uh, yes, please. I, please. I uh, yeah, I need I need to learn how to 
properly write more, so I could just do this. Just sitting there, just all excited, like a giddy. <laughs> I'm always excited anytime you mention anything. But, well, look, look. I, when I learn how to write properly, then I'll start my own dream journal. But uh, for now, Cole, you can write it. Thanks. Yeah, um, I decided to just meditate on some things and just figure some shit out. And I think I saw Avicent. <laughs> Drop the ball. <laughs> How? <laughs> what do you mean you think you saw Avicent? There was a, a like a battle or something. Uh, I was it. I, I was like I I guess I had like uh, wings or some. I saw people that had wings, and there was like a gold throne and this like big dude with a booming voice that was like being an asshole to me. Um, it, everything was like I don't know, like I guess like all there was like a lot of gold shit, and there was like golden silver armor, and I had my mall, and I was I I, I think I was called Dis. And I was angry at, at the dude on the throne because he was making me do something that was wrong, that I thought was wrong, I guess. And I was sent down to lead an army and like my hands were turning red and I was sent down. And when I was down in the battle, like I guess with like demons and angels, I saw Avicent there, and she, like, blew off. The, I don't know what any of that means. The man sitting on the throne. What yeah. What did he look like? Did I see what he looked like? You can roll on perception. Cool. <laughs> mm, that's a uh, 11. <sighs> you... Now that you're trying to think about it, you just all you can think about is light. No features. You know you saw it, but now all of it is just light. Yeah, I I saw. I, I don't know. It was all like bright and shiny. There was like a, a like a, a, a roar or something, but I don't. That's all I remember. And the Hello, roar. What what did it sound like? Ariel, you can see Ariel's face. He is, like, really concerned. He would have moved over at this point. He's, like, standing right in front of you. I don't know, like, it, like an animal that rolls some. And like, I'm sure. Pull in the back. Goes, Cole, did you literally just make popcorn right now? Because I can picture Cole just... <laughs> there, there <laughs> in character. In character. There is a fireball over there. Exactly. Exactly. Popcorn. Man, I really wish that I had done. I wish that I had done the meditation with West this time, like it was uh, with. The, man, that would have been great. If you did well, damn. Oh, God. Well, me, though. I, I um, really... So, from this, Jesus, from hearing about a golden throne, a roar, a man dressed in gold and silver armor. Does any of this ring a bell? Does any of this seem like I might have encountered it or seen it somewhere, read it somewhere? Make me a roll and you tell me what that roll is. Or maybe like from the book of the, the, in the library with all the, the creepy stuff and the gods and the, mm -hmm. and, you know, okay. Yeah, Cole. Roll Cole. me something. Uh, tell me before you roll what you're rolling and just roll. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I will roll. Religion is probably the best thing to right. roll for this. Roll me religion. I think at least. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Um, so with my religion, that comes out to a twenty-five. Shit! Oh my god! I'm that, more oops, nervous. Sorry. Now. Uh, oops, sorry guys, I moved the map by accident. Um, Oopsies. the. I'm gonna send you oh. a message on Discord. Oh, oh yeah. my god. Oh, but I was gonna say, Jesus also, like, hearing Wes talk and stuff like that, he too wanted to see if any of this is clicking too. Same exact thing. Make me a roll. Tell me what that roll is. Uh, I'm also gonna do religion. Okay. 
Where, 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 where are we? Where's, where's, where's our Ariel? Where's our Ariel boy? What's that boy? I think he's sitting like right in front of me. Son. <laughs> Look at my big guy. Oh my the god. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm spelling this right. So that's a twenty-eight. <laughs> More information. <laughs> Nice. Um. <laughs> My God. What did you roll, Cole? It was a twenty-eight on religion. <laughs> what are you? What are you trying to? Uh, to. He was just like listening to West and seeing if, like, if any of this is piecing together, or it sounds familiar, or anything like that, and anything that he's ever read. Uh, from what Wes physically said. Um, you will get this. Okay. Mm, I don't <laughs> like this. Um, because the only other one that could maybe would be a lesser entity. So you don't think that's that's who that would be. Do what? Because every other possibility is lesser than this. Yeah. So that's why you, your head jumps to this 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 name. Mm -hmm. All right, you did. Orc death goes to the door. Uh, which Everybody one? He hears the sounds. Okay. That would be this door over here. The one. Um. Before before you actually leave. Straight from. Ragnar is not. Correct. Before you act, before um, Orc Dev opens the door or something, I'm gonna tell him it was like, there's a two two headed giant on this door. <laughs> I'm gonna point to the other door that I looked through. All right, uh, Orc Dev, so uh, you move to the door. Uh, what do you do? Uh, I'm. See if it's locked. Uh, yeah. As you uh, feel on the metal ring, and uh, you kind of tug slightly on it, uh, you feel as a uh, it's locked. I look and over to Arwell and say, "As uh, paying you for something, lad." As he's stepping forward, as soon as uh, he hears that as well, and uh, uh, so by the time you're turning, he's already like in a half step. Um, and orc death you hear chain just uh, uh pull and tighten and then uh orc death and rognar yeah you both hear it just a large deep hollowed moan and more chains pull tighten as Arlo is currently making his way to. I think there's dead unchained, chained undead over there. Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, Arlo kind of peeks in his ear, waits a couple seconds. You still want me to open it? Well, lad, we have a choice. We can stay here, we can go back the way we came, or we can go the door, to the door that Ragnar wants to go through. It's your decision. I'll open any door you need me to. Oh, I, I already unlocked this door, and there's oh, a two-headed giant over there. When uh, when that happens, you see as uh, Arba kind of looks at you, he's like, "Nicely done." <laughs> <laughs> the locks in this dungeon are incredibly difficult. Good job. Do a thumbs up while Brob does a thumbs up with me. <laughs> oh my! God. As much as we can, anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> order. Yeah, oh, order. Uh, uh, sorry, order. Apologies. Uh, Elysian Vagabonds, what do we do? Where do we want to go? I like we go through this door. We open the door. Uh, yeah. Which which one? The one that uh, that me and Arwell are at. Okay. Arwell needs to do a Thieves' Souls check. And I'm going to look at West and just okay. very seriously say, we'll finish this conversation later. As that happens, you hear a... 
and uh, Arbo kind of uses his foot to open the door, has his cross bolt ready, and immediately you see a large undead Etten oh. pull at the chains. I need you guys to all roll me initiative. Oh, okay. Lovely. Oh, no. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> Wait, what? I mean, I think at that point, that's when Wes was going to get up. Cole, like, I hope you got what you needed. I got it. Oh, oh wow. Fine. Okay. Cool. Um, oh, or that's sorry, your car's up. Um, 20 plus? Uh, oh, oh, uh, I think I, 20. 20? Okay. Uh, what did you get, uh, Colton? 21. Okay, uh, Jeremiah, if you'd be so kind as to write the initiative. So, that would be oh. Ariel, West, Arwell. Arwell got a dirty 20. Sorry, um, Ariel? Ariel, West, and then Arwell. Oh, West and Arwell. Okay, that is 20 right now. Um... Did anyone get a 19? Laz got 19. Nope, apologies. Laz got... No, yeah, 19. Yeah, okay. If no... Uh, 15 up? 17. So, Laz, then? Laz, then Cole. Uh, I believe you have a minus 2 to initiative. Yeah, minus 2. Okay. Uh, 10 up? Person, what are you doing in this campaign? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody got a 10 or higher that hasn't said anything. Okay, then that puts the uh, undead Etten with a minus two to uh, initiative at a 11. Org death has two. Oh my god! Rognar, what did you get? Oh, I had a six. <laughs> okay, uh, the uh, the undead, then uh, um, then it's you, Rog, and then at the end it is uh, Orc death. So. With that, top of the initiative, RL. As soon as you say that and you're stepping into the room, and you see Arwell kind of open up the door as the door kind of slammed, going towards you, or to kind of to step back a little bit. And then you see the initial uh, Etten just kind of move. Um, you do see that it's currently being restrained to, with these chains, kind of just as its arms barely reach the tip of the uh, the door that's open. Ariel, uh, what do we do? Uh, I'm going to move up to 5, 10, 15, and I'm going to reach over to the bowl, the bottom of the fire bowl. Okay. Um, does it, the bowl itself seem hot? Uh, yeah, yeah, it does. Shit. Orc death inspects the chains that's holding the end <laughs> back. Uh, I'll let you roll uh, on your turn, uh, just because okay. the initiative is taking place. Um, that. I'm going to pull out. I'll spend my turn pulling out. Uh, Can you all see the initiative or no? Yeah. No, no, no. no. Okay. I, I want to see if I, there's a way that I can make you all see it, but I guess not. Okay. Never mind. Uh, I'll pull out one of my blankets um, and kind of put it over my hands and try okay. to lift the pole up. Roll me strength. No, hey, we can see that. There it is. I can't yeah. see it. You can't see it. It's on. The... I can see half. Yeah. Okay. No, I can see it on the on the stream or something. But yeah, that's that's yeah. fine. That's fine. I just didn't right. want to block the players with it. It's a fifteen. Oh, yeah, fifteen. As you kind of grab, <laughs> as it flips over. Oh no! I just want to pick it up. Oh, my bad. I thought you were flipping it over. Yeah, you can pick it up. Yeah. I'm going to try to pick it up, and my plan is to throw the fire in the like, in the bowl at the Etten. Roll another strength. Yeah. Roll another strength. Okay. Just hear uh, him out. So that is going to be a, a little better. That's going to be a 16 total. 16. All right. I'm going to roll uh, dexterity saving throw for this uh, undead Etten. Um, with its incredible minus two dexterity, so that four drops to a two. As you throw the flame at it, <clears throat> as one of the heads just starts batching the other head, um, and it's currently in flames. Oh, all right, it worked. No, the magic fire does burn things. Oh, yeah, why do you set things on fire? Why? He does... has 
he, he likes it. Just let it, it makes him happy. It makes him happy. Uh, is how now you that kill these things, is it not? I will let every single person except for Wes and Cole because you're in two different rooms to roll me perception now. Okay. Now that there's flames in here, there's additional light source, uh, different things are active. Perception 12 for Orc Death. Okay. Uh, 12 will do. Uh, right? Yeah, 12 will do. Uh, what about the rest of you guys? I'm rolling one, two. And anyone that is in this room right here may roll perception. Awesome. Uh, let's see. My perception is at plus 19 five. rope. Okay. Yeah, you see it for sure. Uh, that is a 24 for Mario. You guys see it. Um, Orkthet, from what you can see, um, you do see that at the end there's another door, another wooden door, same as this one, um, That uh, and uh, more of a, a table and some of the same tools that were uh, in the other room. If uh, if you recall, um, Cole saying this may have been some like, torture tools or something. Um, you see that the uh, Edson stomach is completely exposed and nothing inside uh you see that the top level it has uh from uh the uh the rib cage and right under the armpit the chains that are attached look like they're going to the ceiling and it looks like the uh the the legs themselves are actually hooked onto the wall and they're actually a couple of inches apart the torso the stomach is not touching the bottom legs. Oh. oh yeah. That's nasty. Okay. He was definitely tortured. So, Ariel, uh, you still have movement, technically? Um, yeah, I mean, he's on fire, but I'll move boo, boo, boo over here. <laughs> Uh, how are we moving? Because if you move that way, that's an A up on the with the uh, attack. Oh, is it? Yeah, because you're moving. R you would have to uh, move here yeah. and then because of the stone wall. Oh, it's oh okay. Sorry. Door. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought the door was where Arwell was standing. No, no. Yeah. Uh, uh, then yeah, no. I limitations of. I don't. I don't want to be like moving into the same space as a for sure on fire creature <laughs> yes understood understood yeah uh limitations of of the system apologies but all right with that it is i believe wes's turn sorry ariel your car should have been up i have my apologies so wes you uh you you hear the the grunts and the chains being pulled um and uh, you you saw the the of the the uh, the metal container being thrown at some large entity, um, and like oh, the next second as there. you peek through, you notice the undead Etten. He's on oh. fire. He's on fire. Ariel, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Our angel boy is the number one source of all fire hazards makes, in this campaign. He just turns around and makes the knife cat face. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hold just like. Oh wow! I guess we are similar in some ways. Look so that. you're becoming take that information. What look at that! Will. You're becoming friendly. Wes, so what do we do? Uh, I'm gonna. Okay, let's see. It's all crowded by that door. It's like, pretty crowded. Yeah. Oh my god! How's a barbarian supposed to move around? I'm a big boy. Uh, um, it, with please and thank yous. <laughs> Please and thank yous. Oh, God, I remember Oria taught me those. All right. Uh, uh, Arwell, about... last. Cole, you're technically on deck after uh, two NPCs. Okay. Or PC and an NPC. So, so 25 gets me about right there. Okay. And... Look, okay, it's a giant undead thing. Let me, let me kill... kill it. Please excuse me. Okay. Big man <laughs> with a hammer. Step over. I, I would like you can company. occupy the same square as your compatriot, uh, Orc Death, but technically you need to be in this square to actually physically hit it through okay, the door. Okay, that's what I'd like to do. All right, as you kind of move a little bit awkwardly through uh, Orc Death and Ariel. Had Orc Death on the head. Excuse me, bud. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna uh, take my mall and I'm. Roll me to hit. Yeah. Okay, uh, so one is an 18 to hit. Okay. And the other that... one is a 17 plus 9. 
Uh, yeah, they both hit. Roll me damage. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yep. Nice. Fuck. Okay. As Wes, you kind of march through, move right. your ball straight into the open doorway, um, kind of pushing it now further uh, and kind of closing the other side completely. What did you get for damage? Uh, that's 25 points total. For nice. Attacks. Nice. Yeah. Uh, as you hit the ever-living hell out of this Eten, and your maul smashes through one of its skulls. It kind of goes through, and then since it's stomach now that you're noticing and all internal organs are completely removed, your maul actually goes right through, almost like you're tearing the skin in half, and you see yeah. now that it's technically now being dangled by two different sections, and its body is now connected to its legs. And it's still kind of just <clears throat> now the two heads looking at you, each controlling one of the arms. I'm just gonna look back and gonna be like, "Now I'm not a cleric, but that doesn't look right." Cole, you need me for what? <laughs> <laughs> As uh, Arwell looks, shoots, uh, technically gets sync attack, and uh, with that, you see the the heads just <clears throat> drop. As two arrows go to the heads, and then the uh, the legs start twitching. So does the arm. Laz uh, will uh, give a inspirational thing to Arwell. Like, yeah, he did it. And you kind of see Wes, a slight little grin on his side, then he quickly goes back to serious cool. mode. Uh, Cole, that is your turn. Uh, uh, it, it technically looks neutralized at the moment, but it is twitching. He's going to pretty much, like, come up by the door, I guess, too, to look in. So, just so you know, that is stone that you're looking oh, through. Oh, the shit. door would be here. <laughs> Cole just stares okay, angrily well, at the wall. Gonna... And just be like... I'm going to just peek in from under my coat. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, just like... Yeah, that's not normal. As uh, just to paint a picture again, uh, there are chains on its... Uh, uh, um, chest and under its armpit pinned up to the ceiling as Wes kind of split this creature in two um, with no internal anything barely skeletal structure to keep it afloat and its legs are a couple inches away from its body uh, hooked onto the wall itself um is Cole able to can Cole roll investigation sure what are we trying He's to do? He's basically see if this is any ways like, like this is somebody that's trying to see how the undead, like if, is this someone trying to study it? I would say that would be more of a uh, insight than an investigation. Insight. Okay. Yeah, roll me insight. Ew. Dirty 20. You get the feeling that, yeah. That's probably what it was. And then it went further and further and further to the point that they dismantled it. And it doesn't look like it could even reach uh, outside the door. Even with its height. It looks... And even though it's been split in twine, uh, it... it uh, oh, sorry, Wes. You've been up for uh, a doozy of a second. Your card. Apologies. Um no. It looks neutralized. This was not meant for any trap. This was meant for removal. And given what the other door that was locked, you had to open these doors. Cole's going to relay that information. All right. Uh, technically, it's the Etten's turn. And uh, now it... Picks itself back up and just you see the eyes just kind of open up, just like 
almost like it doesn't know where it's at, and then start to move as you hear the chains <laughs> as it reaches towards you, Cole and Wes, as the hands are inches away from your face. Um, Fuck! Technically, it can reach you guys, and it will. Uh, so, um, <laughs> let's go! Okay. Uh, that the is. Already talked up enough. Let's do it. Wes, you'll probably be the easiest target. That is a fifteen to hit. Miss. As it uh, by inches, just like, oh, it's kind of just jet back, and you see, uh, uh, or to kind of have to like check you and push you forward as the claw just barely missed. It kind of recoils in to see if it grabbed anything, unknowing what is happening as it's. It's what not all there. Higher than his body allows. Ah. Um, <laughs> Rogna Brom. Back up into him. <laughs> oh, it's uh, a Yeah, it is your turn. Okay. Um, on my turn, first, what I'm gonna do is, um, as softly as a dwarfkin, <laughs> mm-hmm. or as Brom, I mean Rognarkin, he's gonna say, "Y'all are too loud. There's a two-headed giant through this door." And then I'm going to check that door and see if the giant heard us and start is walking towards us. Uh, roll me perception. Oh, shit. Not 20. Oh. Uh, <laughs> as you peek out. Uh-huh. It's still set in the same stone. Same rock. Hmm. I'm going to put uh, Arwell in here for the purpose only of you guys being able to see what is happening yeah. since you i uh, believe have control over our we can, world. we can we can see it when oh, okay you can there. again yeah. i can't see exactly how you guys can oh but i can control l our well okay and then you uh, okay cool that makes sense all right um so question that's yes so that's gonna be my action right yeah that'll so be your you, action you, okay yeah that's fine just one thing yeah uh um, i mean uh if you want to do anything else because it's so small just peeking through that's fine um but uh anything else that you want to do anything no, small I'll, I just wanted to look in there and then see if that giant or like well it's still on the same spot so it didn't hear us is there any lava in that room ragnar not that i can oh uh, did i see anything yeah yeah you definitely saw lava yes um uh, there is a good like 10 10 feet of it uh, sprinkled uh onto like the close edge so your left from your perspective of the like, wall. when you ask me i'm not gonna i think again Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. <Yeah. laughs> uh, with that, uh, Orkset, it is your turn. As uh, everybody's in front of you, you can't really see exactly what's happening. Kind of have to pull through, but uh, it, it it doesn't seem threatening. Is, in other words, if I walk to that table, am I within reach of it? Uh, oh yeah, for sure. You, you you see that its hand does not extend past the physical door. Um, okay. So Wes was just inches too close. All right. So I'm going to run and dodge and roll table. Get on the okay. other side of that table. Sir, uh, if you use the, uh, the disengage action and then you move, you can move your full speed and uh, no attacks opportunity will be uh, provoked on you. But your action is to uh, disengage. So your action right. is to kind of dodge and weave. So yeah, move right. your move your guy as much as you want. Well, up to twenty five. As a uh, uh, orc death moves through, and the action kind of claws a button, you see him tumble, and the leg kind of tries to go over. Um, when you go through, you see more uh, surgical tools. Um, a lot yeah. of them used and uh, and uh, broken, and a door on this side. Okay, can I grab that surgical tool and hold it up to the? Et- Does it react to it? Uh, roll me intelligence. <laughs> Not twenty. It, or it death, does. PhD. It, you sense that it's not reacting uh, in a fearful manner. It's more like it's reacting just because you're in here. Okay. There is another door here. 
And looking through it, Yeah. Looks like it's glowing red, right? Would there be a, like a red glow coming out of that room? Uh, no, actually. Huh? No, it is. Uh, okay. There is no glow, no nothing. Just dark. It's, uh, right. it's yeah. Uh, since you have dark vision, you can see everything in, in uh, different shades of grays and black Correct. and white. But yeah, you don't see Correct. any glow going through it. You uh, there is slight glow when uh, when Rognar opens this door. Uh, okay. But with that, we're uh, top of the round. Ariel, what do we do? I'm just going to stealthily go through this doorway. Uh, which one? The one you by Ragnar. Know. Okay. Roll me a stealth. Uh, I roll... A... 16. Plus my... 2... 18. For 18. Okay, let's see. Not, not too... Uh, Roman perception. Perception. B A. Is that that's fourteen plus five, so nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. As you kind of peek through, and you're pretty sure you made no noise, and you just see this attend eyes look at directly at you, as it just punches the other attend right in the head. <laughs> And you all hear that mutter as now the attendant is going to roll initiative because he has Great. interest. Yeah. In that. Uh, when that happened, I heard that. Uh, the attendant right. gets a nine, so I'm going to put him uh, after the undead right. attendant. I mean, uh, before. Yeah, before the undead attendant. Uh, after? Yeah, don't worry, I got it. Uh, uh, yeah, that's. Six, so, yes. <laughs> uh, so that you still have actions, bonus action. You you technically just moved a couple of feet. Yeah, I'm gonna finish movement to right here. Okay. About about, about right. Yeah. When yeah. That happens, lava's uh, it's hot. It's hot. Yeah. Yes. Lava. When that happens and I hear hear that, I'm just gonna. Uh, that was the plan <laughs> and I, for me. At least. Like, and I thought I was the unstable. Well, the thing <laughs> you didn't hear him. Oh, Etten did wait, see him. You didn't hear Ariel. He was very no, stealthy. No, no, I heard uh, Etten. But you did hear. Okay, yes, yes, you did hear Etten. Yeah. Etten. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to kind of hold my action. So when the Etten gets within reach of me, mm -hmm. I'm going to grapple and throw him into the lava pit right next to me. Okay. All right. Noted. Okay. With that, it is uh, Wes. It is your turn. It is my turn. Uh. I guess, planes. seeing that Ariel has a general plan, I'm going to kind of skirt into the room a little more. I had a general plan up on the surface, too. That didn't really work out too well against the Dreadnought. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just moving in there? Yeah, I'm moving in there. Um, okay. Uh, all right, because I can't see that well. I can... Eh. Ah, get crap. Okay. I can stand there, right? Yes. Uh, technically, okay. if you stand there, you're looking through the other room, so I'm going to force you to stand back slightly. Okay, no problem. All right. I didn't know if that was like an area I could stand. Okay. Uh, you you, you are here in this spot, but because, again, a roll 20, how that works, you peek through the right. other door. Okay, got you. Uh, which, right. there is a door there. Um, so what do you do, since technically you are here? All right, where the f*** did Ariel go? That's my question. Yeah, uh, you don't know. Nah, that's fair. Fly away. <laughs> God damn it, Ariel. <laughs> I turned my back for five seconds. Yup. Alright, oh, and yet in front of me, it's still technically undead. Technically, yeah. Still... Alright, I'm gonna keep hitting it until it stops moving. Okay. Uh, just so you... That's how it works, man. <laughs> oh no, technically it's not gonna nay up on you. Okay, roll me a hit. On that, yeah. All right. Uh, that is a fifteen plus nine and a twelve plus nine. Okay. Uh, both hit. Roll me damage. Cool. What is this con? Uh, 
That is 22 points of damage. 22. Yeah, it definitely did not pass the Undead Fortitude. Um, oh. As it does, and you kind of smash, you hear the spinal claw and just snaps, and the legs kind of still move, look like they're trying to move, and the arms are kind of flinching and twitching as the heads are uh, hitting and bounce off the walls as you hear cracks of the skull. It is pretty much torn apart. It is, by definition, still twitching. God damn it! Uh, but its arms are separated, its legs are pinned against the wall, its heads are bouncing off this wall currently. You broke the spine completely off of its body. Is it still burning? The fire is still here and there, yeah. West, well, how? It's not dead yet. Well, as I had hoped. Hmm? Wait, one more time, Wes? Yeah, Wes just gonna pout because he didn't kill it outright. <laughs> Damn it. Alright, with, with nice that, our well, he's gonna poke through. You see, he's gonna, with this crossbow, just jab at it as it kind of moves and twitches. Boop, boop, boop. And uh, he gets out his thief's tools. His action, bonus action, of course, 19 plus. He kind of moves in to a another room. Of course, right when I leave, they find a chest full of shinies. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, he goes in and just says clear. Yeah, um, he's he's following the person that hired him at the moment, and uh, Orc that went to this room, he's followed going to that room. Uh, so Arwa uh, just went... Laz is going to go through. He says, ew, 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 ew. No, 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 no. Um, take the disengage action and then hide behind West. Uh, and that is Laz's turn. Cole, what do we do? Who? Uh, Cole. Oh, I thought you said Laz. I thought you were Laz. Uh, tip of the letter of you, I'm not hearing anything you're saying. I'm not either. Sorry, I have the mute. No, okay. I was gonna say, so I'm having Cole basically also like Laz, you, and he is going to disengage and go around. Okay, so and as help. as you do, you see that the, the hand twitches, but in a sporadic and not controllable way technically towards you but then in that same motion even though you kind of walk around it uh and uh when you go to this room you do see an uh an empty room with the chest a broken uh bed on this side completely dismantled and two of those small little uh, uh altars but they're not on fire mm. so i'm sorry again it was the same the same altars uh yes but they're not on fire Just letting you know, if I technically move you guys, um, it's only for the sake of, again, the mechanics of roll 20. If you're by a square, you're taking a look in front of that square, so you might get sneak peeks of things that don't exist, technically. Uh, like, uh, Selenina's, like, one of us technically went through a secret door that you haven't found. Oopsies. Yeah. Uh, so, um... Uh, is always doing things on accident, let's be real. 25 to 30 gets him here. Sure, yeah. That's pretty much you, all you can do. And uh, since you have dark vision, you do see a door in front of you. Okay. What do you that little, little cat just, eyes see? It's, it's the same wooden door as the past two that you've seen. Um, it's a, a square wooden door with a, a very weak, uh, darker wood reinforcement around it and a, a, a keyhole with a, a, a um, uh, ring to open. Can I take take a step back because there was a chest right here? Sure, you can take a step back. Yeah, of course. Uh, he wants to investigate the chest. You already used your action to disengage, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's just like, well, there's a chest here. <laughs> That's pretty much it. All right. As the undead, it's technically its turn. It moves toward you, Wes, and uh, does nothing. Uh, now it's a real Edson's turn. 
Yay. Oh, God. No. Uh, one, Yay. two, three, Do four. Fuck. All right. Are you? Uh. That triggers your uh, ready action. Yes, it does. As it runs for with its um, morning star. Uh, do 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 do. Uh, did you did Ariel close the door? Nope. Can that I is a Ariel. Uh, you from oh. here from, from my spot. Uh, my line of no, sight, no, it. yeah, because of nope. your your. Yeah, yeah. Your line of sight is, you know, going through the stone, so no. Yeah. Uh, I believe a 19 does not hit, Ariel. No, it does and not. And then this is less. So as it swings high and then swings really low and kind of just step down as the morning star hits the, the ground itself. And uh, it takes a second for the spikes to, like, get unlodged against the stone. Uh, what do we do? Um, kind of on the last attack, I want to try to grab his arm and kind of redirect his energy into the lava. And, like, kind of throw him to the lava. Oh, roll me a acrobatics. Alright, uh, that is going to be a I mean, solid. athletics, apologies. Uh, you, it, have to, it has to be straight, it has to be athletics. Uh, there's a reason why I was asking, can I see him? 22. No, unfortunately, it's not. Uh, 22. Oh my god, it has plus 5, uh, and you beat it. Yeah, no, um... You are able to grab it, uh, grapple it, but on its next, on your turn, you can use your movement to move it towards. So it's grappled by you as you kind of swing around, uh, move its hands up, kind of forcing it to to bend around as you're kind of flying and pushing it down to get the advantage on this thing, and you're uh, more or less eye to eye to this uh, creature, uh, and it is grappled. It is uh, restrained by you. Uh, let me just put a little marker just for indication. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, Rognar, it is your turn. As you yeah. hear uh, a, a conflict emerge from outside the door. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to move over there because I need to back Ariel up. Mm -hmm. So that's 5, 10, that's 10. Excuse me. And you... As soon as you step out, uh, Rognar, you definitely see the, the conflict. You see Ariel flying, uh, using its strength to, to, uh, to push down this large creature just, uh, as, uh, they're in, uh, locking at the moment. Um, and it looks like he's overpowering it for sure. What do you do? I'm just gonna, that's my full movement. Um, okay. Basically. There for backup, just in case more people come in. Um, sure. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. That's not lava, right? That is lava. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, whoops. That's if you step on this square, you're, you, you, you could get burnt. All right. I can't believe we're playing the floor is lava. We the floor the floor definitely is lava, quite it's literally right here. Literally lava. Um, okay, so you just move. Uh, uh, anything specific uh, for your action or bonus? Um, no. Well, okay. Because I don't have anything. I don't know. Oh wait, no, I can because he's a large creature, right? He is a large creature. I'm gonna do it anyway, just because. Sure. Uh, I'm gonna cast great bonfire. <laughs> right here. <laughs> oh my god. Let me look at the specifics of create bonfire because that's a cantrip, I believe. Yes. It's it's on his feet basically of creating it. Uh, my, okay. Uh, uh, until the spell ends, a magic bonfire fills a five foot cube. Any feature on the bonfire space when uh, cast when you cast a spell must exceed a deck save. Giving it disadvantage take, since it's grappled. Or take um, right now 2d8 because of level. There is damage uh, equivalent to this bonfire. All right, roll, uh, it failed. Roll me 2d8 uh, because I'm per it has minus one deck. So yeah, that's a thir that's a 11. The the bonfire ignites flammable objects. <laughs> so Ariel. Uh, Ariel's <laughs> in the air at the moment. Uh, roll me 2d8 of fire damage. <laughs> okay. Is. Uh, 11. 11, okay. Uh, let me just mark this off right here really quick. As uh, Arya, you see, you hear Rockstar kind of running behind and kind of moves his axe and a little flame just boop, appears and it's getting hotter and bigger and bigger as this, it's like, oh! and it's kind of doing a little dance as his feet are burning uh, and it's uh, it's hurting it for sure. 11, correct? Yes. All right. Yeah. Throw him in the lava. As, uh, you, you all hear that for sure. 
That is part <laughs> of the plan. Like, whoops, I didn't say that softly. I said that normal voice. <laughs> no, I think All right. everything in this whoops. <laughs> probably already heard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that is normal. Orc death. It is now your turn. Okay, there was a doorway that I saw, and now I don't see it anymore. That's because you were, uh, uh, again, as I was explaining, uh, you technically clipped through a secret door because of the mechanics of how this, this works. Okay. Um, but yeah, there is a door right here that our will already There is this door, yes. Secret right. tunnel. <laughs> I will say, because you did get a nat 20 right, on investigation, I'll say that you did notice that there was a slit over here that I'll say that there is a slight little glow that you saw. Okay. Um, and uh, the more you pay attention to it, the more you see a small opening about the size of a dwarf. All right. Uh, can I grip it and pull it open? Yep. Uh, roll me a strength check. <laughs> Two. <laughs> As you do, you can kind of push it, and then you notice that there's something stuck behind it, and it takes you a second to kind of move over the... Uh, the um, the uh, the stone to kind of uh, anchor it out of the way. Um, I will say that um, uh, you can open it, but it will take up your action and bonus to do so. All right, so I'll take up my time. All right, as you as you do so, you see a uh, uh, ten feet in front of you as there's a small little dingy little pit of lava that's kind of cooling down and almost completely stone now. It's just cooling off, um, and the passageway leads to the right of you. Uh, but yeah, uh, discovered another, uh, ooh, technically now their party could be split three ways. So we'll see how that works. Um, or th with that, uh, unless you want to say anything? Uh, anybody want to follow me? Come on. All right. What? Okay. <laughs> As, uh, that happens, uh, you, uh, not that you could see, but, uh, Cole, you see, um, door. Arwell kind of looks at you nods, uh, and uh, you see it's about to take a step, but it's technically Ariel's turn. Goodbye. Hey. Roll me strength and contest with its strength. Nine plus four, that is a uh, oh. five. Sorry. Nine plus five, I so that can, is a fourteen. I can, I, can see, I can see Ariel now, huh? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Reaction. Flash of genius. Okay. You see, you see my eyes sparkle. Ching! Um, plus four to your, <laughs> plus four to your roll. Oh, boy. Uh, okay, so that's going to be a solid... Wait, I have an image for that. 21. 21. As you kind of grab the arms and uh, uh, twist and pull, you just feel inspired as uh, magic starts surging through. You can kind of take a second glance and look at uh, uh, Rognar's eye sparkle, and you just kick... A, just this huge dunk kick onto this Etten as it kind of spins around. And uh, where do you want to move it to? Into the lava. All right. I need to take 20 D6 immediately. Oh, oh, oh. 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 oh um, uh, just, just so you know, uh, Flash of Genius is a reaction. When you use another, when you, when you are another creature, can, you can see within 30 feet of you. Makes an ability check or saving throw. You can use your action to add plus four to the roll, which is my nice. spellcasting ability, basically. That's awesome. <laughs> That's a lot of these. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. What is that? Sixty-two. <laughs> As it immediately takes sixty-two points of fire damage. <laughs> Jeremiah, check the Discord. Oh my god! It's technically not dead. <laughs> it is extremely bloody, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was an action, right? So uh, yeah, yeah. Darn. <laughs> As it is in here. As you kind of uh, donkey kick oh. this, this Etten, and it spins around, and it tries its best to use its mauls and notices what's happening to grab onto anything, but there's literally nothing in the air. As it kind of slips down, and you feel the As it just screams in pain. Aah! As both heads are screaming. Um, is he, like, prone, or is he still standing up? Oh, he's prone in the lava. Good. I'm gonna fly up and past him. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will say due to it extreme amount of... Well, it took 60 points of damage. Let me see. It was over 50 points of damage, and he's gonna make a constitution saving throw of 15. 
which it does not as it just the sheer amount of paint it blacks out completely dang okay Woo. that's good i like it bye bye uh then yeah i'm just gonna fly uh, okay over here i think that's that's about as far as i can go let me just double check no i can go further yay um as you see the as you coin you see the uh the tunnel curve to the side and you uh from your perspective i'll, I'll give it to you that you see two different doors there we go i think that's full movement from there so I, at least uh a wooden door and an uh, a stone door this one um i guess i be i pretty much used all my movement so i'll just wait and see what happens next turn if okay. Ragnar catches up with me and if he does then I'll, I'll choose the door all right as you see Laz as the as the door is open she kind of goes through uh, and then she says okay and she goes uh, Orchid I think there's another secret door because that wall does not look like that wall I'm gonna try opening it okay all right okay she goes <laughs> over and does as you see her oh shit <laughs> i need everybody to run per, uh perception everyone mm -hmm. even us outside everybody oh okay. boy yep. Don't... 11. aha that's nice like, that i was just too busy poking the... cole cole needs to stop cole what do your little beady cat you eyes say? yeah I mean, yeah uh everybody roll 27 cole okay that yeah, is a nat 20 21. Again. Wait, wait, one second. All right. uh, Cole got a 27. That's a pass. Uh, Orchid, what did you get? Nat 20. Uh, all right. Yeah, that's a pass. Wes, what did you get? Wes, what did you get? Oh, sorry. Uh, 11. 11. Okay. Um, that's not a success. Ariel, what did you get? That's too I busy poking the undead. 21. 21. That's a success. Uh, Rognar, what did you get? 25. You all hear this huge <laughs> of a very specific sound that you've heard many, 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 many times of a sword sheathing or unsheathing, uh, but just the length of the time it took for the sword to unsheath. Oh, uh, boy. It's Sephiroth. And the <laughs> have heard that all the way out here. Uh, yeah. As, um... See, we're you truly brothers. All here that except for, uh, West. Um... And then I'm you... Yeah. <laughs> Trying to mimic it. <laughs> okay. And then... I need to do a thing now. Uh, alrighty. More do, 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 do. initiative? Uh, yeah, don't worry about it. Oh, no. what? Oh. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about um, it. Um, click the arrow. There you go. You click the arrow. Okay, I'm, I'll leave the... So, uh, that was Lass's turn. Yeah. Cole. What do you do? Um... Cole wants to investigate the chest first and foremost, like to lift it up. Roll me investigation. Lift my investigation out. Not bad. Uh, 18? 18. Roll me the Xeri saving throw. Fuck. Oh. oh no! I'm sorry. Is, this, is this what Here it is? Go. That, that was a trap chest, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I thought it was something else. Mimic. I wouldn't be that mean. Putting a mimic and a fire giant in the same dungeon is cruel. It was a dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Okay, cool. You only take half damage. Hey, it might, it might not be Car. Uh, it might not be Ragnar, but Karaba got almost eaten by one. Yeah, you take three points of poison damage as this gas just. Pfft, imitates through and you see uh Arwa quickly just grab you and put his hand over your mouth and kind of put you to your butt um as the chest completely opens um and uh oh now make a constitution saving throw oh boy. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. 
No, when they say curiosity, Con saving throw. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Seventeen. All right, cool. Yeah, as you just <laughs> just start coughing up a lung, it burns inside. But there's things inside that chest. Huh? <laughs> What? Uh, there's things inside the chest. Oh, so at least you're getting Here. some reward for your effort. Maybe. Uh, there are... <laughs> there's ink, quills, uh, different assortment of things. Roll me an intelligence check, or arcana your choice. There will be two different results. Nineteen. So there is arcanic ink, arcanic quills, and arcanic paper in here. The materials used to make a wizard's book, essentially, all locked in this chest. That's cool. So hides it in, takes it and puts it in his messenger bag for raccoon. Oh my God, Cole! Just letting you know that if you do put all this in your bag, your bag will be considered full. It is a lot. Okay, it is a wizard spell book laid out in different papers, inks, and quills. Okay. Cole went to college. He knows what he's about. So you can take it for sure, <laughs> but just letting you know that, that that specific bag will be full of just this. So uh, put spell books worth of arcanic paper, ink, and quill. It's worth of arcanic ink. It is a fuck ton. Uh, cool. Uh, undead guy. Okay. Uh, the, oh, the Etten is dead. Yeah, let me let me uh, change that uh, mm -hmm. because it takes an additional twenty d six of fire damage. <laughs> um, I just I was spellbook worth of arcanic I arcanic items. Okay. Marky, you gotta deal with all this next. Bye. Okay. I'll get it. Yeah, he'll pull it. As it is now, uh, Rooknup's turn. Oops. Rognar. What? Rooknup's oh. turn. Oh, you, said, you said like a different name, though. Like I wasn't paying attention to oh. it. Yeah, yeah. Rognar, it is your turn. What do we do, my friend? I will. Oops. Oh, my God. Sorry. Let me use the snap thing. Fifty will reach me all the way there, so that's my action. Wow, oh, that's my action too. Okay. Move it in dash action. Right sure. Here. Yeah. And forty feet over here. No okay. As you are <coughs> moving through, uh, <laughs> Ariel, you hear your friend uh, uh, not really running out of breath, but uh, you can hear that is a little bit of exhaustion for for those a couple feet. Uh, a, a dash essentially in the. <laughs> Mechanic of a uh, um, Brom. Uh, anything that you want to say, Ragnar? That's like you're too fast. I have small <laughs> legs. <laughs> <laughs> Many apologies. Okay. Uh, with that, it is. Let me look at the top of uh, Orkden. It is your turn. All right. So I'm going into the room. Yeah, and Laz has opened this as well. And with this dynamic lighting, I don't. I'm curious what's going on over there. <laughs> you know, right? I'm just like, That's the whole point. You guys, you guys are split. You are yeah. in four, five different rooms technically. So <laughs> one, two, three, four, four different rooms. Sorry, technically. There are many rooms right. where things are happening. Uh, so that's 15 feet. You see, Laz, as she opens the door, it's a completely open. And uh, as she's doing it, that's kind of her, the end of her action, technically. She, you know, she, since everything's going around at the same time, six seconds. Uh, cool. So you can you can go through if you wish, uh, or what do you want to do? Uh, did she look in the room? Uh, as uh, at this moment, she's technically opening it. Um, sure. Also, that she can use her reaction. She's like, I'm kind of busy. As she um, looks, uh, because uh, it's still the same round. So she's. As you're stepping forward, she's just opening the door. Okay. I'll walk around her and have my axe ready as I slowly walk into the room. Okay. Sure. So I guess I'm going. Okay. 
So I went 15 feet. So I'm going yeah. As uh, Orta, you uh, step forward. Does I uh, need to see where your your character lands to describe what's happening? Oh, <laughs> hello. Uh, as you do, you see uh, a um, uh, a Edson just <gasps> and, like it looks like he was waiting and oh, lunges forward because that was its ready action. Uh, it's just going. Okay to swing twice one is at nine which i am pretty sure completely misses and the second one is uh a 21 so he hits me the as the morning star makes contact uh with you as you use your uh your axe to restrain some of the damage oh it's actually pretty low that is a total of eight points of piercing damage as the morning star kind of goes over you it's more of just your nursing of you hitting the the wall um uh and uh yeah technically that's just your movement uh it's okay. still your turn it just had a ready action so do i get to retaliate oh yeah of course it's yeah how, it's many, how many points did you say eight eight points of uh piercing damage so yeah so that was your your uh it's you can look at it this way. Technically, you couldn't reach it. Now you can. <laughs> All right. So I'm swinging my axe twice. All right. Roll me to hit. Holy shit. Really? Uh, 12 and 11. The 11, unfortunately, misses. The 12 hits. All right. Well, at least I got one of them. And plus four. 15. All right, that's uh, easy math for me. Thank you. Um, as you, it runs up in just that startledness, your the first swing was not uh, uh, a a good swing, but it did kind of push it back. As the second swing definitely cuts right into its uh, thigh, you kind of pull out as the, the blood starts pouring out, and uh, you all hear it uh, from uh, this room over here. Now he's where? where? He's still, he's there. yeah he's still in that same square as just uh, the okay. the scream kind of uh, emanated in the um, in the room okay. where uh, the other bones the other guys can hear him. No, he's not undead. He's he not is undead. not undead. He is a living Etten. With that, sure. uh, you still have a bonus action and speech if you want to say anything, Orc Death. Uh, lads, we got a large one here. Um, as you hear under her breath, she's a shit. Um, <laughs> And it uh, looks like she's about to step forward into the room with you. Or into yeah. the hallway with you. So I... Can I swing at him again? Mm, uh, or what technically, can I you can. So you have your bonus action. Uh, you can take an action search, I believe, is with your bonus action. And you have another action again if you want to. But you only get that once every short rest. So you all would right. have to wait an entire hour to get that no ability problem. back. Uh, no but yeah, right. okay. With that, uh, do, 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 do. it is Ariel's turn. And uh, uh, Wes, you're on deck. Ariel, what do we do? Uh, I'm going to go through this door here. Or at least try to. There we go. Okay. So, uh, technically, the door's open. Yay, I go inside. Okay. Uh, as you see... A large desk, um, definitely not the size of most uh, uh, Duragar. Um, you see a open chest uh, over here, and from your perspective, you can see that it's empty. And there's notes and paper um, uh, littered throughout the uh, desk, and one of those cauldrons that's on fire. I will look at what's on the desk. See if there's anything oh, of interest on it. Apologies. The uh the chest is not open. It is closed. Uh, ah. Apologies. Well, wrong wrong I section. Would... So uh um, closed chest and uh notes and paper. I will go to the chest first and open it and inspect the inside. Roll me an investigation. Yep, I can't meta, I wasn't there for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is a 16 for investigation. Roll me the dexterity saving throw. Oh, here we go. 
Oh, that's actually not bad at all. Um, that is going to be 17, 18, I can't 19. see you, so I can't use my thing again. Roll me constitution. <laughs> Take me throw. Yeah, I wonder what Ariel's right. up to right now. As <laughs> coincidentally, you take three points of poison damage as well. As this gas emits through the air. I love this. <sighs> I love You're that one of the it's, it's, oh, it's, it is funny that you both triggered the same trap, technically. What are you going to call it? When are we braiding the friendship? 17. All right. You, 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 you take no other ill effect other than the three points of poison damage. All right. Uh, the, when you open up the chest, there are 16 yellow translucent with filler green uh, gems inside. So 16 yellow translucent gems? Yes. I have no idea. Wait, actually. Yellow gemstones. Kind of ring a bell. But I'm going to just put them in my bag of holding until I can figure mm -hmm. out exactly what these do. Oh, okay. Um, if they do anything, they might just be... Mark gems. down where you found them. And uh, uh, that this is episode 80 for my own sake, because without investigating or smithing through it or having a jeweler look through these, we don't know what the cost is. Because our, my old rule of you just knowing automatically kind of takes away the entire purpose of anyone picking the, uh, the, the, uh, the jeweler's uh, background um okay. or tools so uh right. with that uh that was your action you still have bonus and i think you probably saw quite a bit of movement yeah um with that i'll just kind of go over to the table and okay begin to peruse through things that's about it uh peruse. okay I, um peruse. it's it's a lot of notes so i'll have to give you to your next round yeah. to be able to really see and decipher what's going through that honestly uh, I'd, I'd actually probably just spend my time putting them all in a bag to read later Oh, okay. If that is Time what line. we're going to do, I oh. need to mark down which sure. notes you're taking because that is a whole That's bunch of me. other things that are littered like throughout. Yeah, because Ariel's probably thinking, you know, I don't really have time. I'm separated from my party, first of all, and I don't really have time to be sitting down at this table and reading a bunch of notes. Yeah, one second. I just dropped my pen. Ariel said he doesn't have time to sit down and read? <laughs> Not at no. the moment. I'd like to get out of the Underdark as quickly as we can. <laughs> I will read these when we're back. She'll get safety of the surface. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Uh, tech for for my sake, uh, Colton. When you write down in your inventory these notes, put it that it was in room four of the third floor of this dungeon. Room four, third floor. Got yes. it. Yes. So, with that, that it is five. Wes's turn. Yeah, turn. Back real quick. I might actually. If I, I might have some movement still. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna yeah, look I'm gonna go to where. Oops. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look to where uh, Cole and Arwell went down, and I'm gonna look to see where Orc Death and Laz disappeared, and I'll be like, ah, uh, did a thing, uh, and I'm gonna like do a quick eeny meeny miny mo. Sure. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I'm gonna go follow Orc Death. All right. Before to get to, to right before last is, right before last, right, right there, right there, yeah. What's going on? What big is thing. this? Or the big thing. That's all she says. Big thing. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Uh, oh, sorry. Forty gets you right where Laz is. So I'm gonna just do this. Oh, well, okay, that works. Can I? Uh, I guess just to sacrifice an action, can I just, uh, double my movement to get yeah. to where Orc Death is? Yep, yeah, that's actually how that works, yeah. Using cool. your action to uh, dash. I don't know which direction that was, because I can't see it. Set forward. Uh, thank you. That's five feet. Uh, okay. And you see this Etten here. You still have 35 more feet of movement. I'll get right next to Orc Death. Okay. I'll be like right here. Sure, all right. That works for me. Uh, you still have a bonus action if you want to do anything. I'm gonna hex. Hex and... it, okay. It has been hexed. Uh, it's been hexed, and I'm gonna give it disadvantage on strength. 
Uh, hexy. Okay, there's advantage on strength checks. Got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good to know. With that, uh, it is going to be Arwal's turn. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 5, 10, 15, 25, 30. Oh, 30. So he's going to, as he's kind of jogging through your place. Oh, God. Um, as uh, it kind of gets startled. And yeah, that's a thing. So we get to, uh, first of all, I need to uh, technically change the music a little bit. Uh, apologies. As uh, we have a little bit of proper battle music now, because uh, because I said so. As uh, a uh, oh, I have to click away. Okay, as West or Death, you hear it. Hello. Uh, um, and uh, metal start handing. Come on. Why can't I grab? Oh. Is anyone there? Yeah. No. <laughs> As a fire giant with a great sword in full plate armor approaches you. Boys and girls. I don't hear the music. Or is it just me? That might be just you, bro, because I'm about to shit. Oh my god. We're playing music. So it begins. What is this great battle of our time? I can only hear like static noises. What is this guy? What is this guy? It's a fire giant. Hi. Good. Yeah, I'm just gonna look at it to be like now you right? got one and I got one. I'll stay with the first one I worked with. These yours. Seventeen right, to hit. Okay, West. West seventeen does hit. Yes. Okay. I'm then... be like, I'll let you warm up with that guy. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> then the other one would have been a thirty-seven. Oh, oh my yes, God. that very much hits. Okay. Just like that one misses. That's okay. gonna hurt. A thirty-seven. Oh, oh that's gonna hurt me a lot. Thirty-six points of damage from the first hit. Okay. Oh my. Second oh. attack. Twenty-eight for the second attack. As this huge great sword, easily three times your size, and then slashes, cutting you severely, and then with the blunt hit hitting you and um, uh, just knocking the entire ever living hell out of your wind. That I am bloodied. This isn't good. Run away. Uh, I cannot hear you, Jesus. You cannot hear me. Can anybody hear me? I cannot hear you. Uh, yeah, no, I can hear you. You can hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know what happened, but it is uh, Laz's turn. As uh, she is going to uh, look at you, Wes, yell. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And cast uh, a. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Cast a spell and then run back. She's going to cast uh, Cure Wounds. At, I will say, a second level. Okay. Yeah, okay. Because uh, she still needs to conserve her spells. So that is four, eight, uh, 16 points of uh, healing. Okay. As she heals you, runs back. Bonus action, uh, inspiration. As she looks okay. at you, just says, "What you can do it," and then goes and hides. So for the next ten minutes, you have an inspiration. I will uh, note that with a heart, just like our will. Okay. Crack my neck, be like, "Let's fucking do this." <laughs> uh, Cole, it is your turn. 
Okay, um, well, Cole was going to go through one door, and then he heard... Cole's like, oh my god, what are they doing? Dying! A little bit. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Good lord. That's bad. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay. Alright, so you took a dash action as you're running, you're running, you're running, you're running. Oh my god, there is a fire giant and an Etten. Bonus action, he's uh, gonna just. Uh, shield the face. Okay, alright, uh, yep, yeah, that works. Uh, you did not use it last time, I, I, I remember. So, uh, put no, a concentration chip on you. Still, I, I, uh, retcon that because yeah. still oh. can't be concentrated for the other thing. Okay, I, uh, will take away the undead Etten because he is not a threat. Um, anything that you want to say, Cole? So, have a speech. Um,. So what's the plan? <laughs> Die. As you hear Die. Arwell's uh, crossbow just being loaded. Die. So, Kill more of them than they us. Die. 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 <laughs> it is the Etten's turn. And it is going to uh, split its attacks. Orc death. That is Sorry. a... Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Let me look at the... That is a dirty 20. And then that's cocked. Oh, come on. West. That is a 7. Yes. That's a miss, bro. Yep. Alright, Orc Death. Uh, as the Morning Star flies in your direction, um, causing uh, 15 points of piercing damage. Um, and as it swings over west, you kind of just, in the instinct of what's happening, you kind of just duck as it arcs way too high. Um, as the other Edson's hand grabs onto the mall, uh, I'm sorry, the Morning Star to, uh, to, uh, get in position to attack. That's its turn. Rognard, Brahm, what do we do? But secondly, I know that the music kind of, but it's all expired, but you technically don't know what's happening. What do we do? Uh, there is another door up here, yeah. Yeah, when I come back out of there and he's like passing me, I'll just tell him I've cleared this room. There's nothing in there. All right. Thirty-five. So yeah, I'll I'll gonna have to use my action as well. Thirty-five. So technically, I have ten, fifteen more. Minutes. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm gonna see this door. Is it locked? Luckily, it's uh, not locked. Uh, 35, 40. As oh. you see a gigantic Five. altar to this flame. And the flame okay. is in a stable motion of fire. I'm gonna oh move right there. That's it. Okay. Because that's my boat, my action. And, and Brahm is gonna be here, 40 feet. All right. I'm just gonna say, there's another door over here. And a big fireball. Noted. Um, <laughs> as you move through these stone doors, and you see another stone door on this uh, side. Yeah. Oh, okay. what is these? Are these just... They are a wall decoration, technically. It's okay. just a outpost of what's happening. Um, okay. The entire area literally just looks like the center of attention is this gigantic altar to uh, uh, this flame that it's not moving and dancing like fire does. It's a steady... Almost solid, okay. but you see the inside it moving. Uh, it looks kind of trippy. Almost looks like a translucent. It's like a, it's like a statue or something. Like it's kind of like a statue, but there it is fire inside, and you feel the heat for sure. Okay. With that, it is uh, Orc Death's turn. I'm going back at him. This would need Come to... on, Angle Batter. All right, roll <laughs> me to hit. Ah, uh, much, much, much better. 23 and 26. Both hit. Roll me damage. Uh, come here, laddie. Come here. Come. Okay. Five, one. Oh, shit. I'm not going to say that again. You never say fire one when you roll a one. Uh. Fire 12. 
8 plus 8, 16 points. 16, okay. I believe it was. All right. As uh, you're uh, cutting and slashing uh, at this Etten, um, hitting uh, as probably as high as you can, uh, slashing at the ankle, slashing right at the thigh. Um, and I mean, it's taking some damage. It's it's definitely does not look like it was ready for this, even though it's prepared. I mean, it's taking some severe beating right off the bat. Um, okay. And yeah, it's bleeding profusely. It, it looked like it's getting tired. Uh, here is my question. We are 10 minutes past. Do we want to start the fight next time or do we want to finish it now? I would be fine with maybe making. Because I know you work tomorrow. So. Yeah. It's uh, fine. <laughs> if other people have no objection, I'm good. With are we in agreement? Because, uh. I wouldn't bother me either way. Okay. Starting next week with the fight, we get our blood going real quick. Yeah, that's true. So I'll say, uh, for for the purposes of us um, being ten minutes over and uh, knowing that the party is split and a fire giant just came in, blooding West in one round, <laughs> we're going to end the game here and continue immediately at top of the round. So, you've explored a portion of the third floor, uh, a place where apparently the pets live, and uh, seen a lot of things, but no pets, and uh, a fire giant. I was promised was, dogs. He was promised dogs, and <laughs> a couple of Etans. Um, you guys have stealthily made your way through, but it looks like it was just... One little thing triggered, and they're ready to fight. So, with that, thank you guys so much for uh, watching. Stay in tune. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll continue right where we left off next game. Uh, so, uh, oh my God. next Good week uh, at, uh, at 8.30, we'll start a fight. Um, so, yeah, hey, see you guys next time. Anyone Adios, everyone. Fight? <laughs> we'll fight. Bye. Bye, everybody. Please be safe. Bye. As I try to end the stream.